Yes. All right. Yeah, I don't even know where to begin, man. Like I've been very nervous, but uh, thank you. First of all, thank you for joining, of course. Uh, yeah. 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 Sorry, it got a uh, kind of delayed and rescheduled multiple times. Nah, it's okay. I've also been really busy and all that. Mash said Zalzabab is a nerd. What do you have to say about that? Uh, yes. That's yes. It. It's yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a nerd in, in certain ways. I, I told you I'm a different breed of extremely online guy. Yes. Zalzabab, though, recently has given up on gaming and has been living life. Yes. What, what made you change? Uh, the same thing that makes every man change. A relationship, of <laughs> course. <laughs> yeah. Understandable. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. Uh, I've uh, so I I go to gaming as like a, a comfort thing, but it's really just a coping mechanism for like uh, being pretty antisocial, like in person. And uh, I don't know. So that, that's all kind of changed. Like uh, I, I don't want to like harp on relationship stuff the entire time but yeah i'm finally in a relationship where it's like i'm with somebody that like not only wants to do things but like i also get along with like we spent all day yesterday just in the woods sitting in the middle of a river reading books just chilling it was a good time so that's kind of what we've been doing um that is that's that does sound like a dream though yeah it's, yeah it's one of those things like um i uh I've been in a lot of relationships where it was just kind of like rush into things and then like you wake up one day and you're like, okay, I guess we're doing this thing now. Like we live together. I don't remember this ever really becoming a thing. Uh, so this was the first one that I approached as like, we just wanted to be friends. Neither one of us had any intention of anything more than that. And it just kind of like developed from that point. Yeah. And you also definitely have that relationship where like, the other one is definitely like a, a homie. Yes, a homie, right? We just spend a lot of time together too. That draws you away from gaming too, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, she's basically one of the bros. One of the bros, yes. Beats me up, talks shit to me, yeah. That's hard to find, man. <laughs> yeah. where, 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 where did you meet each other? Uh, it was just a thing at work. Oh, damn. Um, yeah. That's very lucky. Which, uh, yes, well... <laughs> Someone had shown her me like shortly after we started talking. It was like, uh, uh, no two people fall in love faster than people who work together. And yeah, it, it's kind of true because, like, I don't know, you know, that person, there's at least one thing that you can always relate to. Like, you have that one thing you can talk about that, like, the other person gets. Yeah. So, yeah, I will say after my fair share of personal experience that doing this whole online thing never never again never again i think you probably might have some experience too with like online stuff and all that yeah yeah yep yeah i was big in the e-girls for a while that was that was kind of my thing um yeah never never really worked out so i don't know it's been it's been a nice change yeah that's really nice so what you drinking coach what am i drinking yes um that's what i want to know first yeah. i um i i'm just drinking a random Pardon me. We're gonna round the beer, Bit Burger. Oh, you can't see it. Okay. It's, it's it's um. Oh wait, you actually know it? Yeah. So uh, I was born in Germany. Oh, I didn't know this. On a, yeah, on a military base. So like my mom, her dad uh, was in the Air Force, and her mom was like full German. And then my dad was also in the Air Force and met my mom when he was stationed in Germany. So I was actually born in Germany, uh, and have a lot of family that's like very very German. I didn't even know that. Are you ever planning on, on visiting? Uh, I mean, I would like to. It's just, I got a lot of shit going on. I'm also like, I'm not great with like maintaining like long distance relationships, like yeah. with friends or with family. Uh, so it's like, it's a bunch of family that I haven't like talked to basically since I was like, you know, eight years old and was forced to talk to them type of thing. Yeah. So it's like, I, I would like to go to Germany, but it probably wouldn't have anything to do with family. Although I do have uh, a, a great uncle over there who's like the town drunk, has a cot in the back of every bar and all that kind of stuff. So that might be fun. Yeah. Um, sorry, I was quickly changing something, but um, <laughs> the fireplace is what we need in the heat has been said by TG Bambina. Yeah, it do be kind of hot right now. I don't know how you can even do this because you even mentioned um, you going out to the forest and whatnot. Isn't it ridiculously hot over there too? Uh, no, it's not crazy. Uh, it's kind of humid. 
Like, right now it's pretty humid and sticky out, but I don't know, man. I don't mind sweating. I I'd rather be hot and sweaty than, like, shivering and having really? to layer up and stuff. Yeah. See, the thing is, know. how I feel about that is just with the heat, right, you can't take off less clothing than having no clothes on. But with the cold, you can always put on more layers, no? Yes, you can always jump in a river. <laughs> jump in a river, I guess. I guess you can jump in a river. What if you don't have a river, though? Yeah. You shit out of luck. Why are you living there? Get out of Iran. <laughs> I guess, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Well, I'm also I'm also a skinny guy, so it's like heat doesn't bother me nearly as much. Oh, I'm okay. Also, like a little, I'm like a little furnace. That is that is the one problem with starting a relationship in summer. It's like bedtime is like opposite end of the bed because I'm too hot. Yeah. So my girlfriend hates me. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah, I can't I can't do that either. Like it's way too hot. I'm also sleeping without a blanket most of the time nowadays. Yes. Just ridiculously hot. Um what is the hang on, I need to check real quick. The temperature. What's the temperature over there? Uh let's see. Not too crazy. Oh, it's actually getting a bit colder here, but tomorrow it's gonna be twenty seven again. But before uh, a couple days ago it was reaching thirty degrees Celsius. That's way too much. Set in Fahrenheit. Um Freedom units. Eighty six. Yeah, yeah. We're at 79 degrees freedom units. 79. That is the, your stuff. So that'll so be 26. Hot. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. No? Humid yeah. overcast. It's actually, so like last week, it was actually like pretty hot. It was like 90s, but it was dry, which mm. is perfect. This actually feels worse. Like I'm sweating my ass off sitting in here, but that's all right. Salzabab. Yeah, Salzabab has arrived doing a episode Look, number two. Um, I have no idea um, where I'm going to start the, the the thing. I'm thinking about it already. Like, if I were to upload this, like, at what point do I start it? Because at first I had some technical difficulties, but we'll see. I'll figure, I'll figure yeah. it out. It's all a part of it. It's all a part of it. Yes, I'm trying to make it work. But I, to, uh, I had a pod. I, I did a podcast series uh, with a buddy, uh, oh. like maybe four years ago, something like that, and it was always like a disaster. We'd get together like five minutes beforehand. <laughs> talk about anything we were going to talk about just yeah figure out the technicals still yeah just an actual that is wreck. that's kind of what happened just now i'm pretty sure um but uh if you want you can link it in chat as well or i don't know if you want to uh keep it separate that's oh it. no 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 i don't want to get you uh kicked off for violating terms of service oh is it that bad yeah yeah this was this was before uh yeah before twitch before well, let's say twitch was like pretty big like now it's pretty big uh twitch was probably not yes. as big so you could kind of get away with a lot of stuff again extremely online guy like yeah my my whole well not introduction to internet stuff but like introduction to like close-knit internet communities was all through like crypto which is like just as like terrible as you would imagine it it could be like me and my buddy we ran the most successful depression era like crypto discord which was all just you know people talking about wanting to opt themselves because they're losing all their money and oh damn we all kind of leaned into that yeah yeah that's crazy yeah yeah it was a lot of fun <laughs> a lot of fun <laughs> i guess yeah. yeah yeah i used to be uh, a, a very uh very i don't i wouldn't say mean guy but like just straight up reptile like i don't know things don't bother me i don't bad? have a lot of emotion so like but if it was that bad then what, what what made you calm down a bit more uh honestly probably just growing up and then like i've had to reset my life numerous times like just new location new people not because things were like that terrible but just because like if you're not good at maintaining relationships already and then the relationships you have around you you kind of don't appreciate uh and those kind of start to fall to the wayside um yeah you end up like taking stock of your life and going like hmm, what am i actually doing yeah like what is the point in all of this stuff so like um yeah i don't know i had to do like another big reset on my life like all those friends that i talked about uh they said i was an asshole like these were the worst people yeah that i've probably ever known and they were like dude you're you're terrible so i had to just like kind of take a step back and be like all right what am i actually doing here yeah, yeah that must have hit really hard for sure 
Yeah. yeah. Also, I'm just like, I'm getting old. I'm 33 years old. I'm a type 1 diabetic chain smoker. I like to drink. I've lived a long life, lots of drug addictions, never really taken care of myself. Like, let's be real. We're probably at like midlife era if I do good from here on out. Yeah. So it's kind of like, let's, uh, let's figure out what we actually want to get out of this. Yeah, I definitely noticed that with um, a lot of people that uh, do do video games. Just the closer they get to 30, the more the realization kicks in that like they're being toxic and whatnot um, in video games or, or outside of video games. It's like, it never ends really, really well. And yeah, it's just you end up alone. And that's the kind of the, that's a big thing. That's yeah. a big thing for sure. Yeah. And I think it's one of those things like I don't think people are like conscious of like legacy, like what they're going to leave behind. Like I don't think people nowadays like live their whole life like thinking about like the mark they're gonna leave on the world the imprint they're gonna leave on the world but i think in the back of their mind like a lot of people do wonder like when i go like what have i done what have i left what what are people gonna remember and uh you know as time goes by like that becomes more and more of a pressing matter i think that's a big thing that's like changed in me as well is just like realizing like yeah i gotta i gotta get a move on yeah I, what 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 I really want to get into though is actually um, how did you get into ESO, dude? Yes, Elder Scrolls Online. Uh, work buddy. So oh. uh, it, it was another like it was a life reset. So right now I live in East Tennessee, uh, in the U.S. So I moved there from California. So it's you know all the way across the country. So I moved out here. I uh, had a job working at a moonshine distillery as like a guy that does like tasting samples. It's so, like um basically a bar it's like a bartender but you do like these groups of people for like 15 minutes and you shuffle them out and all that stuff uh so i became good friends with my co-workers because i like i moved out here only knowing my sister and her at the time uh boyfriend they're now married but um i only knew them when i moved out here so i made good friends with the people that i worked with uh one of the guys that i worked with this was like uh I moved out here in 2020, so this was like middle of COVID. Uh, so there wasn't like, there wasn't anything you could do. So uh, one of the guys that I worked with, he played a lot of games. He brought up ESO and like, I was a big, like I started playing Elder Scrolls games, like back with Morrowind and everything. I think when a lot of people probably did. Uh, so I was always interested in ESO, but um, like when it came out, I didn't have like a gaming PC that could handle anything like that. So I never got into it and then like forgot it was a thing. And then Buddy brought it up. Uh, we started playing and the way like I work, I have a very like bingy addictive personality. Yeah. So I basically would go to work for about four hours a day, uh, come home, crack beers. And this guy that I was working with the whole time, we immediately hop on ESO for like 10 12 hours so just that was life for i don't know probably six seven months something like that uh and then he kind of and actually what kind of got me off of vso is he stopped playing like he started playing other games how long ago was that um right about the time actually i started subscribing to you so i don't know this was oh, almost damn. a year ago like like i've come back and like I'll come back like here and there yeah for little things but like never like that grind when you first started you know that kind of thing um because i like i lost the kind of social aspect of it because part of my whole like changing things up was like okay look i, I can have gaming friends i can have online friends but that, those can't be like my best friends I, I just i can't do that anymore i need to like start establishing roots like where i am uh, and so when my IRL buddy stopped playing the game, I was like, okay, I, I guess like, you know, ship has sailed, done with this one. Yeah. Yeah. And then Bannerlord hit. I, I yeah. miss Bannerlord. I'll be honest, man. I miss it. It was one hell of a community as well. Yeah. It, it, that was a fun one because that was, that was one that we all started playing together. And like, we got quite a few people from stream that yep. were like wanted to play and were interested like i said like 
I think the reason that was the case was because so many like so many of us were hyped on Bannerlord when it came out. Like yeah. we were so excited and it was such a shit game that none of us played it and we forgot we owned it. Yeah. So then when you found Bannerlord <laughs> online, it was basically a free game. It was like, yeah. oh, I bought this five years ago or whatever it was. We had forgotten about it. For the for the people that don't know uh, what we're talking about, Mountain Blade Bannerlord um has an online mod that allows you to play with multiple multiple people it's not fully functional yet where you can do um, all the same things as in the normal base game but you can play online and do the whole open world stuff together um it's basically an mmo version of of that yeah boundlord yeah no boundlord is a, was a was a really good game definitely uh, okay, very fun yeah terracon i'm not saying banner lord the game was shit, but the multiplayer of banner lord when it came out was so bad yeah it, it was terrible the game itself, it's like you knew the game was going to like the actual base game you knew was going to be good because it's a very simple kind of, you know, uh, equation there. But the multiplayer was awful. Was that I don't actually remember anything when Bandler came out. I only bought it, it like had, way later. So it had like a couple different game modes. It had one that was basically like it was basically Siege. It was like one team versus another and it was mm -hmm. like a team deathmatch style thing. Mm -hmm. But like you started out with a certain amount of like currency or whatever and you could like so you choose your starting class it cost you so much or whatever and then you got more more yeah. currency for kills and stuff like that um but it was just it was bad um and is it laggy it was all that stuff too no the lag wasn't that bad it was just i don't it, it basically was a game where it was like uh you either ran around with spears and if you got good then you could hit people with a spear or you just siege them so like on defense it's like it was pretty fun because you could siege people yeah with like oil pots and stuff like that but then it was like okay i don't really have a reason to upgrade my class so uh and then there was another game mode i think it was like up to four or six people and it was kind of like free for all but you all commanded a squad so you'd have like a squad of soldiers um, mm. but it would all be like the same troop type like it wasn't mixed troops or anything like that and it was kind of like free for all but the maps were like the maps were too big and again it was just like you were either cavalry or range there was no reason to play anything else and i i don't know i it was just got burnt like real quick on that one yeah it was a big disappointment but at the same time it's like we didn't have any online for banner lord before so i don't know like what people were expecting mm -hmm. for mountain blade like i i don't really know what they were expecting for online gameplay so that was a weird one where i was like i mean the base game's fine i don't know what you guys were expecting in a pvp yeah and then eventually um Battle lord online came out and that's when we started playing i actually got it um i found out about it through ethart another streamer and uh uh, yeah, I had a really, I had a really good time. The only thing that is missing is just there is no real end game to it. Where in Mountain Blade, yeah. normally any Mountain Blade is just like okay, you you dominate the whole map, but there is no dominating the map because you can't own a town or an area. So then you're just kind of stuck with just farming gear and farming units, and then you can PvP other players in Banlord Online, but that's about it. Um, so yeah, it's uh, wasn't wasn't really too great at end game, but the grind towards the end game was kind of fun because you're still learning and stuff, and you're. Um, I, I'll be very honest, that was probably the most um, in depth I've played Bannerlord, um, because I had to now like understand more about the different unit types because every di unit had uh, every different unit had different stats, of course. It was really fun uh, learning more about it, but then once you got to the end game part where like you know what you can run. For pvp then it just becomes a bit boring because then like there is nothing to do other than uh other than uh, hoping that you can find other people that will fight you with equal numbers let's say yes because you know what yeah. the prop the problem with it was yeah. like as a player like the grind is too slow leveling yourself so it's like you can have yeah. a pvp ready army that's true like money money's no problem but like a player is so much better than an npc that it's like okay you know a guy a single guy could go and wipe out your whole army and because you just don't have the stats there's nothing you can do about it yeah so i i don't know it would have been it would it would have been cool if they would have had some sort of zone where like your stats are maxed or something like that for pvp like that would yeah. be really cool yeah where just everyone gets max stats 
you have your troops or whatever you have your gear but like you know some guy with 200 riding to your 35 isn't just <laughs> running around in circles around you yeah there's nothing you can do there unfortunately you know it it reminds me of the first mountain blade like in the sense that like that first mountain blade game was like so much fun but there wasn't really much to do which, it, which it, one it, was that just warband or was that something else no no, no before war the very first mountain oh, the very blade. first so the very first Mountain Blade was developed by one guy, which I always appreciated. That's what made, uh, I was never critical of that game because it was made by a single dude. And it was, it was a very fun game. Yeah, yeah, check it out. It's, um, I don't even. Is like, it just called Mountain Blade? Yeah, it's just called Mountain Blade. Yeah. Okay. It looks like Warband, but, but it's also, oh uh, wait. It's, yeah. Try Mountain Blade, like original or something. <laughs> original okay is it that that looks like runescape my dude <laughs> yeah yeah no it, yeah. it does but it, again it was developed by a single guy like, yeah there's... but it was a very fun game yeah i kind of miss that nowadays a oh, warband is the expansion oh that's why then yeah oh okay. it was the expansion that came out like a few years later i want to say i see i don't know terracon maybe knows more than i do but like yeah there was the original and then warband was basically like the oh my god people bought my game i now have money and i think he was able to like hire some more devs yeah yeah i do like miss warband, that band yeah War warband was or not warband but the original was like you had companions but they couldn't do anything like you could own castles start your own nation but like the whole idea with warband of like setting your people up in charge of things and stuff like that like that hadn't come oh okay that hadn't come about or anything you know what i like was, about a lot yeah. about about the whole mountain blade thing i'm sorry to interrupt but it's just the, all, um, all the modding the modding is a big part of it too for sure yeah yeah and i'm i don't know i go back and forth with like modding stuff um like i don't like game breaking mods which i know some people like they love that kind of stuff yeah like give, give what's me, game like, breaking for you well just like like i i understand that like star wars warband <laughs> yeah. would be fun but it's like to me like yeah. I, i'll just play a different game like it, this yeah. is no longer that game yeah so it's like uh yeah i i don't know like um but I, I really appreciate modders. Like, I'm glad that they're out there. Like, it's, you know, people just doing things for the sake of doing things for, for fun. I enjoy that a lot. So I appreciate them, but some of them need to just stop. <laughs> Sorry, real quick. Uh, I have to uh, do something. Um. But the, th the thing about uh, uh, of the modding, because you said like you don't like uh, game breaking things like Star Wars, for example. But the thing is, the reason why why uh, Star Wars or Lord of the Rings, let's say, was so good is because there is no game out there that will offer what Mountain Blade modded does <laughs> for the for that um, right thing, right? Like there is no Star Wars like rule the galaxy thing, or there's no St or Lord of the Rings rule Middle Earth um, kind of th right. kind of game. For as far as I know, like th that functions the same way. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe I should, maybe I should like reevaluate that look, like treating it like oh, this is just a different game now yeah. at this point. Yeah. I don't know. I'm weird with games, man. Like I've been burned so much on like trying a new game. Like oh, this sounds interesting. I bet this is really good, and then just being like, this is terrible. Yeah. Like, I'm just as likely to go back and play Baldur's Gate two as I am to try a new game that comes out because like I love that game I know exactly what that game is it's a great game I'm gonna have a bunch of fun even though I've done it a bunch um and uh you, you know I, I I don't know it's hard for me to get behind something new um real quick I have an emergency I will be back in less than a minute one sec yeah yeah no problem
Sorry, I've returned. Um, Hello. Please hold back. Yeah, sorry. I didn't expect that. But all is good. All is good. A little bit out of breath. Okay, good. <laughs> good, good. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, Bandlord, uh, we're talking about Star Wars Online mods. Yeah, what about... So, that got me thinking, since you said you don't like um, game-breaking mods, but then I'm assuming... What about, like, Minecraft and stuff? Have you played Minecraft? Yeah, I, I never I never got crazy into Minecraft, but yeah, I, I've, I've played... My, Minecraft, I treat differently because... The, the, there is no base game really you know there is obviously but it's just <laughs> kind of like it's always a do whatever you want you know choose your own adventure type of thing there is no point to the end of minecraft type of yeah. thing so like sandbox games absolutely like sandboxes mod the hell out of them i don't care that's i'll try all of those i'll mess around with those although oddly enough not with kenshi uh, <laughs> Again, I go back to the like I don't like game breaking. I, yeah. I feel like Kenji is such a good game yeah. on its own. Yeah. Where it just needed like a little bit more like kind of content and like a little bit of like performance upgrades, and that's all you needed. Yeah. You didn't need like completely game changing mods. Speaking of Kenji, um, oh, can we find so something much. about the develop? Yeah, Kenji is such a phenomenal game for people that don't know. It's a game where you can literally do whatever you want, and it's it's. It's like I have not seen a game similar to it at all. It's such a choose your own adventure type of thing. It doesn't hold your hand, nothing. It's very brutal. You can make it easier for yourself, of course. Um, but yeah, it's just uh, make a character and go go do stuff. As you can see here, for example, there's like a bunch of units uh, that you can control. It's just a, such a phenomenal game. The map is huge. This doesn't really show you how big the game actually is, but it is really huge. And uh, yeah, it's a very brutal game, but it's, uh, it's definitely... It's strange to me, actually, that this never really picked up that much. It's known, uh, it's known by a lot of people, uh, but not like it's not like a mainstream type of game, which is very strange because it kind of reminds me of like when Morrowind became a thing, let's say, and uh, Elder Scrolls Morrowind, and then obviously it blew up, and it's, it's the Elder Scrolls that we know now. Um, and it, it surprises me that there is no bigger following for Kenshi, considering. Uh, um, all the new stuff that other games don't really have as an RPG um, that this game offers for sure. Like you can lose limbs and whatnot. <laughs> uh, crazy shit yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's... You know what, honestly, I think a lot of people struggle with is the sandbox aspect of it. I think a lot of people want to be told like what to do in a game. Like also they true. want quest, do quest. Like yeah. y you look at... Like if you ever get bored and you go and look at like Kenchi reviews and stuff that people complain about that all the time they're like i don't know what to do it's like well this is the wrong game yeah like kenshi is the number one game like i'm so glad that you played that on stream that's yeah. by the way that's the did you not one know one it by the way thankful no, no no i had no idea oh. so like you've introduced me to a lot of games like just randomly playing them and i'm like thank you i appreciate that because you will just play like whatever yeah and Ken kenshi is like my number one game that like if I could, I wish I could wipe my brain of all Kenshi knowledge <laughs> and play it for the first time all over again. Yeah. I kind of feel the same way with Morrowind, but I can't go back to Morrowind, I think, anymore. It's been too long I now. I try I try to go back. It's yeah. hard. It's really hard. Yeah. Which sucks because it is such a fun... But the early game grind of Morrowind is so frustrating. You're just so inept. You're. Uh, that might be one of those games where you're like, you know what? I'm just going to... Let's just punch in cheats. Let's just let's give yeah. myself max stats. Oh, this man's looking up Kenshi Two news. Yeah, I was cur I was curious if there was anything new. Never. But the, Never. no, it's just not. It's gonna it's gonna release about the same time as Ashes of Creation, of course. Oh God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 It, it's gonna be the Duke Nukem of yeah. our generation. It's just twenty years later, <laughs> and it's gonna be so disappointing. I can't wait until someone figures out a way to make Kenshi multiplayer. That'd be sick. And then you can't, but then like they would have yeah. to remove the ability to pause because that would ruin everything, I think. Um, or maybe not. Maybe maybe if like one, okay, maybe if you both decide to like, okay, I can press pause, then okay. But I would feel like it's really annoying if, if one person keeps on pressing pause, let's say. I mean, it is, but like yeah. you can do it. Like okay. Baldur's Gate 2 has multiplayer like that. Yeah, you know, true people, actually. People can pause the game. Yeah. Yeah, such a good game. I kind of, you know what? I kind of also want to, Go go back and do something like that. I want you know what I really really miss. I enjoy this a lot, the Battle Online, but also just other games in general that 
um, allow you to play with other people. Because I've always been, uh, yeah. you know, like playing games with with people is always more fun for me. I could never be a solo player. How how other people do that? Uh, yeah, I can't. So like when we played Banlord Online, it was super cool to see everyone. Just I don't know. Even even if it was if I was doing my own thing with just grinding, and but people are still online just hanging out and stuff. I kind of miss that feel. I feel like that's the thing that modern games don't really. Um, they don't really connect you anymore. You know what I mean? It's like everything is so, yeah, yeah separated. Oh, even just seeing, even just seeing your buddy on the map, like yeah. this, this is actually a, like a real life equivalent. Like this actually, uh, this happened today. Yeah. Uh, I was dropping my girlfriend off at home to take her car to the shop and all this stuff, and like her sister and her mom drive past us. She was so excited to see her <laughs> sister and her mom. Yeah. And I was like, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like the world happens. Like. I guess sometimes you just cross paths with people. She's like, you don't get excited about that? I was like, no, I don't know. I guess it just happens. I don't really think about it. Yeah. She's like, it's so random that like we can just do the, you're of all the people that you can run across. Then I had to like correct her and be like, you know, we are like less than a mile from your house. It's not that crazy that we passed your family, but you know, but yeah, like I, I remember playing and I would like run across like Ethar just running around the desert. Like me and Ethar, <laughs> yeah. like we don't talk, like we're, we're not like friends or anything. Like Ethar's cool, but like we don't know each other. And I'd, yeah. I'd still be excited. I'd be like, yeah. ooh, Ethar's here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, the thing is, like with uh, modern games, is um, because everything is like everything is, is, is more for our um, uh, quality of life things. Like I, I can give one example. For example, in, in Arcage, another MMO, or RuneScape, Let's, we can even bring up RuneScape. Um, about like people used to have to go to a certain area and to inter and they had to interact with other players or in our cage you had like um, specific areas where you could use the auction uh, auction house where you can trade with other players so this means that you will no doubt meet other people there and maybe you'll strike a conversation or something or maybe you're selling something or whatever right so you would always uh you're kind of forced to interact with other people and then later they changed it uh, specifically then for Arcade as an example where you can access the auction house no matter where you are so you could literally be in nowhere doing your own thing and then you'll never interact with other people because why well, you wouldn't have to and although it's a quality of life thing it does kind of like ruin the whole community kind of feel to it because now you're playing a single player in an MMO you know yeah yeah, yeah. No, leave me the inconvenience of having to interact with people I would very much appreciate that yeah same <laughs> it's a lot of people are, nowadays are like oh but i'm really happy alone or whatever in those mmos and all that um i guess it also depends on what kind of person you are i don't think it i don't think it hurts if if uh if people are, are more um forced to have to interact with each other i'm not saying like everyone should be friends with each other but just like hey i need to buy something i need to buy it off a player and therefore you need to whisper him or something but like people nowadays are way too shy for that kind of stuff and it kind of kind of also notices how people get very lonely because of it so like there's they're like oh i'm okay and all that but really they're they're lonely because they've never really been taught how to how to communicate and i feel like our generation right because you're 33 i'm 30 now as well and a little bit older generation maybe even maybe even the younger generation to, to a certain degree with if if you're gaming nowadays with a multiplayer MMO, like you're more likely to be pushed into like a solo kind of um, uh, gaming playstyle than you are how it used to be. Because back in the day, you would always have to do stuff with other people, whether it's like team-based shooters or or I don't know, uh, completing a raid or a dungeon together, right? And that requires uh, commitment and and uh, teamwork and all that. But nowadays, a lot of this a lot of stuff is catered towards the solo player. Thing. like for example looking for a group looking for a group for uh f uh for a dungeon so therefore you don't have to talk with anyone or anything you just queue up and then you just go in which is not bad for quality of life but at the same time it like kind of makes games less fun because i feel like if you go back all the way back in time games were always meant to be played with other people right and not for yeah. just yeah and i kind of miss that i kind of miss that um, um in modern games where like we're not really pushed to to socialize when i feel like that's a kind of a big thing that maybe should be a bit more done bit done a bit more yes yeah i think the answer is harder games make things that you can't solo like i i don't know uh like i understand accessibility and you it, here's the thing the yeah. idea of like an actual community and things like that is completely counter to like a good business method so i understand why yeah it doesn't happen it's like the uh, and this was before I came about, but I mean, I kind of get the idea of the whole, like, one Tamriel thing. Like, I understand why people who were playing ESO before that hate that, hated that update. Because it's like, well, you just open up the entire game to every, like, you didn't have to earn anything. Yeah. Uh, 
you didn't have to work your way to that and it's made the game like it's just it's too easy like why why bother grouping to do like dolmens you don't have to there's no reason to if you want to go do delves you don't have to group to go do a delve so it's like there are certain things you do have to group for but too much of the game can just be done on its own and especially a game that's like completely grind focused which every mmo is it's like a lot of people will just get lost in the sauce of solo grind and they never even experience that stuff that you actually made to be somewhat of a, a social thing yeah i think um with the rise although it's been it's been a couple years already but with the rise of like survival games and stuff it was really nice to just join a community and just to play on a server but the initial step of finding a community is, is really difficult so if you if you don't know anyone and you want to play valheim let's say it's kind of kind of difficult to to meet other people for sure but i feel like yeah. Because those games were, were were doing really well, survival games, Valheim and Valheim copies. Um, it was really nice to see that, like, we're going back to the roots of gaming of just playing together. And uh, yeah, I definitely kind of miss that too. Like, I'm also I'm also pl kind of playing solo at the moment. Uh, but um, like, I I do I do miss I do miss it. Yeah, uh, it's either like I feel I feel like I would either want to uh, uh, do the things that you you do right with like uh, being able to uh, go outside and just have fun there. Or I wouldn't mind actually, but I wouldn't mind playing games with other people too. But uh, not having both sometimes uh, at the times is kind of it's kind of sad. It's kind of I don't know where I'm going with this, but like yeah, it is kind of sad to just uh, uh, not play uh, games with other people or not doing stuff outside. Basically, what I'm saying is social interaction can be nice sometimes. Yes, <laughs> I don't know where I'm going. Yeah, with this. yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I get it. And like, if I found a game, yeah, like. I I mean, again, part of it, a big part of it is like a relationship. Like I have another person around, like I'm not going to, yeah. she likes to go out and do stuff. Like I'm not going to like force her to sit around in the house all day while I'm like playing games or like I want to go do things with her. But even if I wasn't in that relationship, like I kind of had gotten out of playing games before that anyway, just because, yeah, I was completely missing that social aspect of it. Yeah. Like there, there and was it's rough, a right? draw to me. Yeah. Because yeah. it's like. I like I again I will go play an old game before I will try a new game like I will go play a game that I know is tried and true yeah but at a certain point like I don't know you just get you get tired of it and it's like if you can't play what the only thing that I would get out of a game now it's like the only thing I've played in the last two months basically has been the a couple of times that we played the forest together oh yeah and then like maybe 10 minutes of playing something yeah it's because like i'm not playing a game like i'm hanging out with i'm hanging out with my friends so I, that's what i'm trying to do i'm trying to hang out with my friends i'm not trying to grind dungeons all day like i just want to yeah. hang out i want to chat like if we didn't have like the voice chat like voice chat for me is a big thing because yeah. like i basically like lived on twitter and like forums and discord like text chat for three years but the one thing so like i was talking about how we ran that discord server what made our discord server even though it was all like just extremely depressed people and like all kinds of stuff what made it like so popular and so successful at a time when like crypto was dying and nobody cared about it was because we constantly had like giant group chats yeah. so it would be like it would be 30 people in a group chat all having fun uh actually talking actually interacting not just like text on a screen yeah so like having a voice chat in a game like that's a that's a big part of it it's it's pretty much 100 percent of it is the social aspect of it beyond just text like even in eso like yeah it was a part of guilds and like there are people that like i could still talk to like if i logged in and they were online and i sent them a whisper like they would respond type of thing but like it's not enough to make me want to like play that game again yeah i think also um i don't know what it's like for you but um i think i think you would probably agree with this as well is that i've now reached the point too where like i don't necessarily feel like even playing certain games um but i don't mind hanging out in twitch with people because those are that's the community that i hang out with right so seeing other streamers that i hang out with or, or people from from the chat and whatnot um it's it's kind of cool to just have that as my source of entertainment slash just moment of relaxation too oh yeah like i said like i don't play so 
but yeah. like the streams I appear in are ESO streams yeah. because those are like the communities that like I like I, and I'm not like super close with any of those people like I like this chat obviously there's a few people that like you know we're we're all friends like we talk and we play games together a couple times and we have that yeah. whole experience but like uh, other chats like that's just there is some sort of social aspect yeah to it and that's the only thing that keeps me going like back to it yeah like, i was big into watching uh Ken like i became really good friends with someone that had just started playing kenchi oh. <laughs> bringing it back to kenchi yeah but he was playing kenchi for the first time and i happened to pop into a stream when he had like four people yeah and he played kenchi like every day for like a month straight and me and him became like really cool we became good friends and stuff and then he kind of like fell off the face of the planet type of thing as you know streamers do they come and they go type of thing uh, yeah i know which is uh it's sad it's i could sad. talk about that too it's just like it's kind of like a size too because i always try to make a connection with other people too uh viewers it's easy because like when it comes to like i just go live and people can come hang out it's just that easy but when it comes to like me uh, wanting to meet other streamers though however or like me trying to like uh, uh trying a little bit like okay uh, for as much as i can right like i'm not like i can't i can't do much for other people's streams but um just to like hang out in their streams or whatnot and kind of encourage them as well because some people get down too with like the whole like oh i don't know if i should keep streaming i always try to support it too if people talk to me about it like that but then like yeah most of the people actually don't end up streaming and then like they just they just completely are gone from twitch entirely and it's kind of it kind of sucks because I've, I've definitely um um not talked to a lot of people that um no longer um stream but are just in general just gone i guess um yeah. same thing with gaming as well like some people will just stop gaming and then they'll never talk to them again even if you try to and all that but it's just like yeah and that happens a lot i think that i think that just how it happened i think just life happens for most people actually yeah just life yeah i think it's yeah yeah it's just life thing uh, yeah. that's a big part of it and then like um, I don't like the streamer part, like disappearing from Twitch. I don't know how much of it, cause this is like, I've had these thoughts. Like I, I thought about streaming for a while, but not to like make any money or anything yeah. like that. But just cause I'm like, look, I'm already playing games. I like yeah. hanging out. Maybe people <laughs> yeah. will come hang out while I play games. Exactly. Yeah. Then I was like, but if I like, I'm not going to like keep that up. Like, I'm going to get bored of it at some point or just not want to stream anymore. Like, I'm going to have, like, I have my moments where it's like, I don't want to socialize for, like, a month, two months, three months at a time. Yeah. And then, like, it would be embarrassing to come back and be like, hey, hey, hey guys, yeah. hey, guys, I'm back. Like, I don't know. I, I just, I wouldn't want to do that. Now, like, I can disappear. It doesn't matter. And then I'll come back later and be like, yeah, shit happens. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and also um, with the whole like um, coming back, I think Twitch is also very brutal in that sense because I think it's a bit more than just, um, it's not, it's okay, so how can I say this? You know how sometimes uh, we've talked about how people are very loyal to a certain game category, right? And then like you won't see them if you play another category. I think it's also like that in for Twitch in general because there are also some people, of course, that... Uh, um, they love hanging out here and all that and all that but let's say i weren't i, I weren't to not stream or something i know for sure as well that they also wouldn't really talk again and stuff in discord and all that and that's okay like it, it happens and yeah, all that but okay. that's also yeah. same thing with games and twitch it's just um it's a uh, it's a nice way of meeting people but i think just overall um the problem is is maintaining those relationships i think that's the big the biggest problem is maintaining relationships for sure yeah and it's yeah. people understand like uh, i don't know because it's some people like, like I said, I'm not good at, like, maintaining long-distance relationships. I'm also not good in, like, in-person social situations unless it's, like, people that I know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's people understanding that, like, hey, there's going to be a time where, like, I'm just going to have to, like, fuck off for two months. Like, you're not going to hear from me, and I'm not upset with you. I just, like, I'm doing other things. And then, yeah. like, I'm going to... And then I'm going to come back around and like finding people that are like understanding of that, cool with that, and like don't want to give you shit about it. Like that, that's hard to find. Yeah. Uh, I have it happen um, often as well where people come in chat that haven't been here for like half a year or something and then they apologize. But it's like, what are you apologizing yeah. for, dude? Like you don't have to apologize. <laughs> like, we, all, we all got stuff like, going on. You have an amazing memory for that kind of stuff. 
where you're like, oh man, I haven't seen, like, they're people you haven't seen in like six months. Like, I, I could never. It's crazy that, like, you remember that kind of stuff. Yeah, there's like certain moments, um, certain moments during stream, let's say, let's say, um, uh, let's say I run out of stuff to talk about or whatever. There's always a couple people that would just, um, randomly bring up a certain topic or something that would just, um, provide value to the stream. Um, like that and then um, I, I really of course that's very helpful and in the moments where those kind of things happen or let's say let's say something um, what else let's say aloe juice for example um, I've, for the longest time I've been yeah. a big aloe juice supporter <laughs> and I love aloe juice and I would bring up aloe juice of course sometimes so not now now that I'm not really that into aloe juice although I still love it it's a very phen phenomenal drink um, no matter the brand but um then if I bring it up, then there are certain people, of course, around that would have said something when I mentioned something about aloe juice. And I kind of, uh, that's how I remember things. It's same thing with like certain songs. Like, let's say um, Dangle Me Ball is a good example. For example, yeah, he so likes, I was yeah. Say, yeah, your music stuff. Yeah. yeah, like every song, every every song that I play, um, I will attach that um, as a memory to, to someone from chat, of course, or just something in, in life, whatever. So if I hear Latin music, for example, I instantaneously think Dangle Me Ball. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah and that kind of stuff watermelon aloe juice i still have to try that out yes so let's try that out i haven't tried watermelon i've had uh, guava juice recently that was phenomenal as well have you ever drank uh, guava juice uh i have and uh watermelon aloe juice does sound interesting but we did establish yesterday with alpha that watermelon is the inferior melon to all melons <laughs> hey what i didn't even read that in chat what what, what what kind of melon do you have then yeah, yeah don't worry i was talking to your girlfriend don't worry about <laughs> okay it. okay no, nothing happened yeah <laughs> uh, we were talking about like uh she said she had gotten melon yeah i was asking her if she had honeydew or cantaloupe or watermelon and then she was talking about how i, I don't remember what it was i think it was gallia melon or something or gaia melon and then she mentioned that watermelon was the worst melon i was like yes absolutely coach did good wait huh but well, watermelon is nice though no watermelon sucks why wait what other melons did you say you said it's watermelon so cantaloupe plant. watermelon cantaloupe honeydew honeydew oh honey day honeydew oh we had honeydew then yeah yeah we had honeydew for sure um okay. just for the record my so my melon of those three melons uh if it's ripe and perfect, honeydew is the best one. However, cantaloupe is the most consistent, and watermelon is the worst, just all around. And I don't oh. care what Mash says. No, but watermelon, no, dude. Watermelon is just nah, like it's just it's just it's nah, not really nah, it's nah, not nah. like a flavor type of thing. It's just like a it 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 feels nice. No, it yeah, feels yeah, nice. Yeah. Kind That's of thing. fine. That's yeah. fine. Yes, as a texture and like yeah. ease of eat. Like no, I appreciate watermelon for what it is. Trust me, but. If we're just talking about, if I have my choice of eating these melons, yeah. watermelons, bottom, bottom of the barrel. If you think watermelon is best in slot, you're siding with a man who grew up with hot dog shaped melons. That That is mash. Hot dog shaped, hot melons. Dog -shaped melons. Oh, but but mash, mash actually does eat orange peels, which apparently is actually very healthy to do. I didn't know that. Was it orange, was it, was it orange peels? It was, right? I mean, I'm sure, I guess, whatever. I also eat salads. Salads are healthy and they That's don't also taste <laughs> awful. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? Yeah. No, because I remember actually uh, one point when he mentioned about like he eats oh tangerine peels. Yes. Uh, when he when when you talked about eating that, right? I was like, okay. But I've actually heard some people using that for for cooking and whatnot. And then um, I I looked it up online. Apparently, it's actually really good. Well, to... so you can like eat D is he eating just like straight peels or like candied orange peels because you can candy the peel no, peel peels okay. like peel peels yes just straight up peels oh, <laughs> like i don't want to be this guy but that's some, that's some third world stuff right there <laughs> <laughs> just eating Damn. orange peels <laughs> tangerine peels tea is so good how, how would you do that do you just put it in like with tea and, and water or like how, how does one make tangerine peel tea i oh. bet you do a pour over i'm confused now I bet you do a pour over, would be my guess. What's a pour over? Oh, you oh you just like you pour the water over it like multiple oh. times. I see. Yeah. I actually, it's like oh. looking at it. It doesn't like. I know I'm not looking at tea for the most part, but like the idea of it is actually kind of appealing. Appealing. <laughs> appealing. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
Got them. <laughs> yeah, see, a lot of these are like, it's like candied. It looks like. No, but like, I, mean, yeah, I can't, you, man. You the, put enough sugar on stuff. How do you feel? And this is a very important question. This might just affect the, the future of our friendship. How do you feel about banana flavored candy? Banana foot. So before I get into how I feel <laughs> about it, do you know where uh, the idea of banana, like, you know how that doesn't taste like a banana at yeah, all? Yeah, at all. Not so, at all. So that flavor is based on a species of banana that is now extinct. Like we basically oh. bred that banana out. Yeah, yeah. So that that is what bananas used to taste like until we started uh, growing them differently, basically. Okay. So what's the original so called then? It is banana. Like but that's <laughs> yeah. what banana, we yeah. we just genetically, it's just genetically choosing like bigger bananas and and things like that. Because how know, would I even Google people, that? We have to feed more people. I don't I don't know. Original Look banana. Yeah, banana flavor. Original. It banana. Probably, they're just smaller bananas. Oh oh, it's like it's like this. Oh I see. Then I, 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 you know, sometimes modernization thing, or whatever, it's it's a lot better. <laughs> it don't look that yeah. appealing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Appealing. He did appealing. It again. Yes. <laughs> he went back to the well. Yes. Yes. So like that that banana flavored candy is like truly banana flavor. We just don't have those bananas anymore. Okay. Uh, how I feel about them? I mean, banana flavored runts are pretty good. I don't like banana flavored laffy taffy. Like taffy stuff is pretty good, but it's not like my go-to. I'm not like throwing it away. Wait, Lala I'm said a big candy guy. Lala said every fruit has a similar story. You're telling me that all the free fruits that we yeah, eat nowadays yeah. are just like nowhere yeah. near the original? No fruit or vegetable is basically what it was. Even I would say probably about a hundred years ago. Well, I'm confused because this looks like a normal watermelon. No, it doesn't. How does that look like a normal watermelon? Okay, this doesn't actually. Never mind. But yeah, tomato is a fruit. Yes, it has seeds. Yes, tomato is a fruit. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ketchup is fruit juice. Yeah. You can just but, drink that. But then a cereal soup. Uh, yes, yeah. I think it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there are some soups you have to chew. Loaded baked potato soup. You got to chew that. So yeah, cereal is soup. Strawberries count as nuts. Wait, huh? Uh, you're gonna have to. I'm gonna Ketchup is a salted jam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of true as well. Yes. <laughs> My life is a lie, dude. <laughs> My life is a lie. What is this? Yes, it's crazy. That's what broke you. Yeah. Definitely broke me. But wa watermelon does not look good. Yeah. No. Yeah, no, nah, I think we did good with that one. Yeah. I think we did good on most things because the, the other banana thing also did not look too appealing. I mean, you know, teach their own, I guess. This is the best hands down. Aloe Juice, dude, by Aloe King. Wonderful. I'm not sponsored, but it's just phenomenal. Yes. Or, yes. Yeah, Aloe Juice is like you tried it right one thing but yeah yeah i've had exactly of the problem is my diabetes oh there's so yeah. much sugar and there aloe is. juice yeah it is but it's so good it is it's so, so good, good. <laughs> i don't know what it is that makes it so tasty were you the one that um i can't remember it was someone from chat who i remember uh, telling me about like how they always heard me talking about it and they finally got it themselves oh no 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 oh, that I'd was my okay yeah i'd had it a long time actually my first experience with aloe juice was like spur of the moment like moving out of my house and going to live with some random mexican family for like three months <laughs> and like uh i was working a job it was a catering job so like you know work was like off and on they worked five days a week so like i never had any money and, but they kept aloe juice on hand and so i would just raid this family of yeah. aloe juice yeah i felt so bad about it too every time i went downstairs there's nobody home and i'm like tiptoeing <laughs> downstairs just pounding aloe juice it's it's never I'm enough no right? it's, it's never not. enough dude it's never enough don't you feel Why like it's the same with capri caprison caprison how do you pronounce it yes yeah it's never there's never enough like it's crazy to think but like this big bottle right you can drink in one in one session no problem Dude, that's yes. the best part about being an adult you can just grab three capri suns and drink them all at once no True. one's gonna yell at you 
Turu. <laughs> yes. I, there's a there's a store um, in the city, um, which apparently is um, everywhere. I think it's called Lecker Lecker Lecker. I know Lala for sure knows it, but Lecker Lecker uh, has a lot of stuff, and they also have cheap Capricorn. So I, whenever we go, I also get myself a uh, Capricorn. Yes. yes. Which, by the way, I still don't know how they make money because everything is really cheap here. It's really strange. Oh yeah. Um, and, yeah. I don't know. Check expiration dates. Maybe there's some that new expired things. I don't know. Because like you can get a lot of stuff for a single a single euro, which is really crazy to think about. Because most products nowadays, uh, uh, everything is a lot more expensive. Dude, the price of hamburgers as well. It's just just a simple hamburger, like a McDonald's hamburger. I used to be able to get that for a euro. It's like, is it is double the price, man? Like what? Well, Triple. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta go back to cooking for yourself. People. Oh yeah. yeah. People talk about this a lot, like the price of like food and everything. It's actually like a big hot topic in the U.S. right now. Yeah. About how like ready-made foods are like super expensive. But if you go to the grocery store and you're actually like buying things it's to cook, also expensive because we cook. We always cook ourselves. But um. Yeah, maybe. It's maybe, expensive. Yeah, <laughs> maybe over there again. Maybe over there. But like, it hasn't changed a lot over here. And I don't no? fault people. Like, I understand. Yeah. I understand that not everybody wants to work. Like you know 60 hours a week and then have to cook for their family type of thing but i don't know that's a big thing in the u.s as well right where like people kind of have to do multiple jobs as well or no because the pay yeah. is so low yeah it's uh yeah it's a little outrageous i basically it's gotten much more expensive to live like not not everyday cost of things so much but just rent in itself like owning a home in itself all of that stuff has gotten yeah outrageous. and so it's one of those things like if you have a car and you're willing to drive like two hours to your job you can go live out in the middle of nowhere and go work like a normal you know retail job let's say and you can afford a place but yeah it's it's rough if you're not doing all of that like right now uh also depends on where you live right yeah yeah so like the little hot spots and stuff come up like that like where i am now when i moved out here uh it was very cheap and now just three years later it is very expensive it's just it's gotten out of control which is weird too because it would lead you to believe like there's less space but like i just drove all the way across the country like less than a month ago like three weeks ago and it's just so much dead open space everywhere. Yeah. But, you know, you, you can't just live out in the middle of nowhere, I guess. You know what's expensive? Like mm. Gaming, dude. Let me talk about that. Yes. The prices, uh, dude, $70 or euros is now the standard? Like, what? Not only that, but like, okay, so like I built my PC maybe. I probably built this PC about three years ago. Yeah, because it was shortly before I moved out here. And it was... I mean, not top of the line, but like, you know, I spent like two grand building this thing. Like, as soon as I have to update anything on this computer, like, I'm done. <laughs> I'm just giving it away. I, I can't afford, like, it, it's crazy how expensive all of this stuff has gotten. And yes, games themselves. And I mean, we've talked about this before, but it's like charging me $70 for a game with day one DLC. Yeah. And you're basically giving me early access to a quarter of a game. It's, yeah, it's crazy. It's you know one game is kind of is kind of strange to think about, but one game uh, with day one DLC and everything included, let's say it's a hundred or hundred or hundred fifty whatever, that's like half the price of a console, dude. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. crazy. I know it's actually it makes me more and more when I go back to console days too. So I'm just like I just want to buy a new Xbox and like I know every game is gonna run perfectly like it is well not perfectly but as perfectly as it's going to run on anybody else's xbox like it's i don't i don't need to worry about graphics cards i don't need to worry about getting a new processor or my power supply going out or anything like that like, i'm terrified to shut off my computer every time i shut it down i'm afraid it's not going to turn back on you know my problem is with console mm. immunity <laughs> i don't yeah. know man like it's even 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 um trying on twitch when i look at console stuff it's just like i know it's already hard to get to, to find a, com a decent community in general like the, just a, a chill vibe kind of stuff because everyone's always like really salty and stuff 
but console is is really really hard i think even console people would agree but if you were to play certain game sets just really it's going to be a lot of um n words and whatnot you know what i think part of that is too uh i think it's far more casual gamers like to be honest like they're kind of winning they're just uh because their thing is like i just shut this console off and all of this goes away yeah it's not like oh i closed my game and now i go to discord now i go to tw like i'm sure there's some of that but it's not right there it re does require some sort of extra effort to get to those things yeah That's so i i think it's very much more a like plus you know we're talking about the investment of it like you spend your money on your console and that's that's it you you know people are pumping crazy amounts of money in their gaming pcs and everything it, it really does become like the focus of life and, well i mean uh, the thing is like we've, we've recently had a, uh, a couple of years where uh, pc parts were really expensive but that's going down already right so yeah it it's not that bad anymore better. It has gotten better. Yeah. And in general, I don't see the thing is, I don't know. This is my first um, actual decent PC mm -hmm. that I have. Um, the other one was a budget PC before when I started streaming as well. Um, I don't know if how expensive it, it has to be to get yourself a decent PC, PC that can future proof as well. Because the main argument that people used to make always is that if you build a PC, you don't have to worry about it for, for longer than a console, let's say. Because if uh, yeah, if the next console know, comes man. out, you know, if the next console comes out, then you'd have to pay that again. I guess, but like, I don't know. I feel like it's starting, it's starting to get to that point. Because like, I don't know what was the gap between like Xbox 360 and uh, and the new series. Like, what is it, Series S or whatever? I don't know. I haven't had a console since I bought early 360 days. But like, that was a pretty good gap. You know, that was like a decade. You got like 10 really good years where like 360. Oh, speaking of 360, um, I had two or three 360s and two of them were, were like given to me by friends mm -hmm. and two out of three had the red ring of death. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> that I was also a thing. thing too. That's a thing. Yeah. But, like, but that's all, that can also happen to a PC, of course, where your PC malfunctions and whatnot. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah. Like, like, again, I look at my PC like... I don't know like it wasn't anything crazy but it's like i got a 1080 i got a 1080 ti it's not a crazy graphics card but i spent a good chunk of money on this thing and it's already like i can't run games at max i can't even run a lot of games at high now like new games that come out yeah so realistically like maybe this card has another like two three years max on it so we're talking about six years Whereas yeah. you got a full decade of 360 being like the Xbox that you could get, PS4 being the PlayStation you could get. What it's about, about um, resell? Is there, is there any resell value for your PC components? Not really. Uh, like, because, like, it's a, like, I feel like if you buy a gaming PC, it's, those are almost easier to sell, like a pre built PC. Yeah. Because you can just post, like, a link to that PC. The only people that are going to be interested in rebuying my PC are people that are taking the time to like look up the different parts that I use yeah. to put this thing together. Like, and at that point, like they're probably just going to buy something new because they understand like, uh, this guy's got a power supply that's got two, three years on it. You know, the motherboard needs to be updated. Graphics card needs it's for like a frac. I could sell it for a hundred bucks. Like someone would take it, like would want it for a hundred dollars, but like why bother? Yeah. But the last time, the first gaming PC that I built, like uh, I don't know, maybe ten years ago, I couldn't even sell the thing. I ended up just trading it for like a MacBook or something, because somebody wanted a PC and I wanted a MacBook. I just wanted something light and mobile and on the go, because I was about to be living out of my car. So it was just like a situation that worked out nicely for both of us. Yeah. I was uh, reading something real quick. Oh no, you're oh. okay. Um, yeah, no, I, I will just give this thing away once I'm done with it. I'm just gonna give it away. Yeah, I did. The, um, I, um, my old PC is now with my dad's as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I usually give them away to like my cousins and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't know. I'm big on just giving things away. It's a big problem of mine. Like just 
start my life over, give everything away, start from scratch. Yeah, I, uh, I had to. I think it's fine because like my dad wanted a new PC or whatever, and I gave yeah. I gave it to him for like twenty five percent or whatever of of the of whatever it's worth, like super super cheap, just so it's so it's dude, You sold your dad a PC. Yeah, because like I also need a, I also need money. I wasn't in a good spot at the time, yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, yeah, um, I'm just, I'm I mean, I also I I also paid for groceries and stuff, but that's that's besides right. the point. But um, yeah, so no, I I did um, I sold it for really really cheap, and because he also asked like, okay, but like your your PC is like a, a couple years old, whatever. It's like um, this is still good, and I'm like, what are you planning on doing with it? He's like, yeah. Uh, facebook and <laughs> youtube yeah. and stuff like okay, yeah you can definitely be fine with my computer you don't have to worry about it yes yeah, he's, he's not developing a game or anything <laughs> right yeah. yeah let me get you a phone with a big screen it's yeah. gonna perform just as well as the computer yeah. yeah so no yeah for for the stuff that he wants to do he can he can watch he can watch good uh, he can watch youtube and uh, facebook and whatever he wants yes he can do that right. it's no big deal yeah, don't worry, Dad. This computer is gonna work for fifty years. Yeah, you. You'll yeah. It was a buy new power supply. <laughs> was a ten fifty Ti with uh, some other stuff, but I mean, like for YouTube and stuff, it's all good. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. Much. yeah, 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 yeah. That and um, <laughs> th this computer though, I remember when I first, when I upgraded to this computer. Oh my god, dude, it's this. It's like it's it's like Christmas all over again. Like the first moment you like, I think I'm not sure if it was Cyberpunk or if, if I played another game. But the moment I oh, played something that had like a bit higher graphics, oh my god! I was like, I can't believe this. This is phenomenal, dude. What a 1010 experience that is. To like to see your, your upgrade from going from 20 frames a second in an MMO to like now actually being 60 or higher. Yes. See the funny thing with my computer, like I only got it because I just had a bunch of money and didn't know what to do with it so i was also just like i don't know i guess i'll buy a piece. like my parts sat there for a month because i just didn't want to deal with it <laughs> they yeah. just sat around i was like whatever oh, I, you building the pc was a 10 10 experience yeah alpha drum said you building the pc was a 10 10 experience so when i build this computer i have no idea i have no knowledge about computers whatsoever i'm super papega with all this and um i had a group of friends uh in discord um and i had my phone out of course because i can't i can't i didn't have a uh, computer or anything because i was building it um so i, I used my phone to uh, show everyone like what was going on and they would tell me exactly what to do dude installing the io shield was like half an hour to an hour and the reason be being actually like most of them they don't they tend to disagree but i'm telling you because i was the one putting it in right it's like the size wasn't correct with the io io shoe like it just didn't click in easily like, at yeah, all yeah, they must have sent me the no, wrong no but really because like because <laughs> yeah. there was like a, there was like once i i put it in even like with with force it, there was a, 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 a bubble or a bump there was a bump as well indicating that like no it's not the right size at all that's why it took so long right in my in my defense yes yeah. uh, but the rest was pretty easy though i think the rest was not too long but um yeah it was uh it was yeah i every part just to be sure like i had my phone out and i was very oh man i was it, it took way longer i was even like dude i'm gonna pay someone to 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 install this for me because this is too hard and then i got i got laughed at and all not pointed pointed fingers oh yeah, yeah absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. i yeah i remember those yeah me trying to like learn linux and figure that all that stuff out <laughs> and like posting screenshots people were just like look at this idiot why don't you just yeah just throw that thing out of the window i'm like thanks guys <laughs> thank you for encouraging me i'm also uh just because alpha drum just mentioned it um uh, i'm also very gullible but they said something about like you need to be grounded oh, or whatever no. so i'm like oh, you no. have to go outside to touch grass i was ready to go outside and touch grass too and they laughed and stuff and i'm like what are you laughing about? i don't get it i have to go outside no i'm oh, doing the thing i'm doing the thing <laughs> dude i didn't know man i didn't know so yeah, I definitely got memed a lot when I was building this PC because I'm very gullible. I don't know anything, computer dude. They're like, yeah, make sure it doesn't shock, whatever. You have to go outside and touch your ass. Oh my goodness. That's, oh man. Yeah, dude. Those guys rule. Send me those at names. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was, that was Paige and that was um, Alpha as well. Oh, uh, that's great. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Oh man. Well, Speaking of touching grass, coach. When are you going to start touching more grass? I've been outside, dude. I go outside sometimes, yeah. Yeah. The last thing we, we went I, to a shelter I thing. Like city run around. Yeah, I know you do like the city run around, but I'm talking about like let's go live the forest. I don't the, know. 
Horrors? You're crazy, man. No, I don't want to get killed. I've seen enough horror movies, dude. I am trying to be safe. Yes. You're not going to get killed. Yes. Ah, come on. You know, you know, have you heard about um have you heard about that person that uh uh they got killed in the forest? Dude, lots of people have be more specific. Exactly, cuz see see that answer. See that answer right there because like if you had said yes, then then yes. If you had said no, that would be like yeah, because they live in the forest and you would have never found out. Exactly my point. Yes. <laughs> All those people killed in the cities though. Okay, you got know, me man. there. You got me there. Yeah, I don't know. There's just something <laughs> I like unplugging. I like being detached from everything. Thing about like nature, dude, and just in in general, like views and stuff. Like I've been to some places, and it's just I don't know. I I could easily see that on a Google image, dude. <laughs> I'm not really too too uh, amazed by it or anything. And I don't know, going outside and seeing stuff is really not that not that important, I guess, for me because you gotta, yeah, you got to see better things then. Cause I'm also, I was also that same kind of guy, but like, yeah. like drive, like for instance, and it's not just the thing that you're seeing. It's like the whole experience of doing like everything that comes around with it. Like the picture that I have in my background there, Yeah. like I didn't have to do any sort of hike there. I just, that was a drive. Me and my girlfriend just drove, pulled over to the side of the road, but it was like accompanied by this whole, like, oh, like brand new relationship. Great day. We had a. We had an awesome time going to get lunch and like we're just driving around and we happen to notice like your sunset like out over the mountains type of thing and yeah i, I don't know like that, that image will always have like some sort of memory attached to it and, and like an impact to me or like uh when we were on our trip across the country we we're driving through this uh state of new mexico so new mexico it's all flat it's just desert yeah and a lot of people sounds boring as hell like desert flat there's nothing but what you don't realize is like you get this weird thing where like you're driving out in the middle of nowhere there's nobody around you and you can see for like you know 200 miles i don't know what that is in like weird euro units like probably 280 kilometers or whatever all around you and the sky actually like comes down to meet the ground and you get these weird like cloud effects where the way the light hits you can see clouds actually touching the ground and you just notice these interesting little things that like you wouldn't notice if you didn't go out and check it out like i'm a very it, i guess skyrim like mods my guy like, <laughs> i'm a very like curious like inquisitive person like i see something interesting like i want to know more about it like, yeah i go huh i've never seen that before so i only have like that that know. moment that you have right there i have that with music I don't have yeah, that with okay. visual, like audio. I have that a lot, but with visuals, mm -hmm. I don't really have that at all. I don't know. Yeah, because it's really difficult to see like visuals. Like for example, your back, your the background picture that you mentioned, right? For me, it could have just been any any other Google image, and it would have been the same for me. Mm -hmm. But with audio, right. I can definitely s hear a difference. But of course, your visual there, your background picture is not the same as any Google image. Like I know that. But it just doesn't well, hit the same fair. thing. Yeah, because like I don't have that audibly. Like I, yeah. I don't have that that same thing that you get from music. So yeah, no, I mean, sure, I understand. Yeah, yeah, it is different for people. I would encourage some people. I know it's a meme, but like I was also that guy. Like, yeah, because <laughs> like look, I was also that guy that was like, oh, you know, you don't feel good. Drink water. Go work out. Okay, thanks for the advice. Like. Uh, I'm sad. Like, try going outside. Like, yeah. great, thanks. You really solved my problems. But to be honest, like, I like I went through a very like heavy depressive state, and then I started forcing myself to like go and do things, and then eventually it got to a point where I wasn't having to force myself. There were just things that I wanted to do. Yeah. Now we're just chilling. Now we just vibe. That's that's good. And, like, and outside is always available to you. Yeah, you know there are gonna, there are going to be times when a game is going to come out. Like say people wanted to play Diablo, they can't afford to play Diablo. Like you, you can't do that. Yeah. But what I can do is I can go outside. Yes, you need gas or something. I don't know how expensive gas. A bicycle is <laughs> in the Netherlands, or, yeah. Or, or, yeah, just yeah, something. something like, yeah. You need to be able to get around. Yeah, but yeah. like the barrier to entry. Like I live. I'm also very lucky. Like I live right next to a national park like it's a bunch of wilderness so like yeah. i can just hop out of my car drive for 20 minutes and i'm in the middle of the mountains like with nobody around me 
like that's always accessible to you yeah i think also like the the biggest thing there isn't necessarily like go outside and do stuff but it's more so like find find your way of um finding um like trying out trying out new things comfort comfort whatever like um looking yeah. for comfort or like art art can also be a creative like let's say you are the presence all that something something like art can also can also help with that of course like maybe you want to start drawing or maybe you want to make music or anything so like it depends on the person for sure but that's definitely also one of them like you can't go outside and just like enjoy life and whatnot from, uh from just going outside yeah that's also a thing yeah yeah just go out and just go do something like, do something try right. something new yes yeah trying something new is big i think a lot yeah. of people uh, it is it, it's self-conscious it's like not wanting to like experience the unknown type of thing yeah i was also one of those like very self-conscious people and then at some point i like i don't know maybe this is the bad way to look at it but i was kind of like look i don't like most people i think most people are stupid as hell so why am I worried about what other people think about me if I think they're also stupid? Yeah. <laughs> like, I have weird ways of rationalizing things around me. Yeah. So don't take any of my advice and run with it. Like the way I got myself out of depression was being like, basically calling myself like a little bitch and like get over it type of thing, which doesn't work. Don't do that, but it worked for me. So yeah. like all, all uh, that Everyone stuff, is different like, for sure. Yeah. Everyone is different. Like, but yeah, I think being self-conscious that is the number one thing that people should get a like if there's one thing that's going to make you like happy quote unquote happy it's going to be getting over your self-consciousness and just doing things it's, regardless it's, of how you're going to be perceived it's very simple it's just if you don't like the situation that you're currently in then try to work towards getting out of that situation and that of course can be anything but it's like if you do the same thing every day, right? Like, I I can come up with Elder Scrolls Online as an example, right? But let's say you play Elder Scrolls Online every day, but you don't like it, right? And then you suffer because you don't like it, then then you should not do it. And it's the same thing with other things, with other games or whatever, right? And then like, if you still are not happy, then try new things. Because if you're doing the same thing and you're not happy, then why are you doing those things? You know? That's yeah. uh, so like, if you are feeling that it's life is repetitive, or you're not getting what you want from life then why are you doing the same things, right? Because there's always something new to do. Some people say like, oh, there's nothing to do in life and all that, and they get really depressed and stuff. It's like, well, something as simple, like some some people would bring up an extreme argument of saying like, hey, what about skydiving? Like, yeah, that is actually also an example that you could give. Like, yeah, you've never done that. Have you ever ridden a bike or have you ever gone to the forest? As you, you say yourself, right? Like going to the forest. Then um, yeah. if you have a yeah, need... Yeah, if you... to a museum and just like stared at a picture like yeah you don't know exactly try it. try it yeah because doing the same thing every day and not actually getting yourself into a, situ a situation where you're comfortable uh with yourself and and everything um then that's yeah then you're kind of like you're li you're limiting yourself you know and it's it's very simple by just trying out new things i would say yeah, yeah and that and that's like one thing so like this is something i've been working on uh with my girl so my girlfriend is 24 she's very young she very educated works a basically like dead end type of job is not happy with her job so it's like well what do you want to do she's like i don't know but i don't want to do this it's like yeah. so do something different literally literally anything like right now we're trying to find her like seasonal jobs anywhere in the country working at national parks and even if it's just like being a cook like at a resort but yeah in Yellowstone National Park or something. It's like, you can always do these things, but particularly like when you're young. Like I said, I've started my life over a million different times. Yeah. Like most recent one being when I was 30 years old. But like, if you're if you're in your 20s and like you're working some dead end job and you're not happy doing it, don't do that. Just do anything else. There's nothing like you don't have, if you don't have kids and you don't have family that are relying on you to do things, just start over scratch everything go find something different there's no reason to be unhappy with what you're doing or yeah. like how you're going about living your life every day like it's it's not that hard you don't need much most people i think most people don't realize like you don't need much to like be happy some of the best times of my life were in my early 20s living out of my car 
what I happen to like. Like, I worked at a subway that was in a 24-hour truck stop, so there were showers and there was laundry, and I lived by the beach. And so, like, I had a place where I could shower and I could do my laundry and I could sleep in my car knowing I was safe because it was 24 hours, so there's people there all the time. And on the times when I wasn't working, I could go, like, chill at the beach. Yeah. And I had, like, it, almost nothing, but still a great time. And I didn't have anyone relying on me, so, like, I could do that stuff guilt-free. So, if you're doing something that makes you unhappy right now, stop doing that. Yeah. Cut it out. You don't have to. It's, um, and it's also like, oh, but, you know, some people could say, like, oh, but you guys are making it sound a lot easier than it is. It's because it kind of is. <laughs> it, it really is. It really so, is. Like, yeah. So, I'll get into this thing real quick so mash when we were in voice chat the other day was talking about me like being rich or whatever and i know he was joking but so i, I i've already talked to you about like having like a crypto background or whatever yeah so i had a lot of money a ton of money i could have done anything i wanted for the rest of my life i could have set my family up for the rest of their lives i could have just never worked another day in my life but i was unhappy I was extremely depressed and like, I, I, I don't know, it didn't fix anything. My whole life I had been led to believe like you have to work hard to make all this money and then life gets better. And then I had everything and turns out like nothing that I want actually requires all that much money. So money didn't end up fixing anything. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I gave it all away <laughs> in November of last year. I basically, I just anonymously donated all of my money to like children's hospitals and like women's shelters and things like that. Just gave it all away because I wasn't happy with having all that stuff yeah. started my life over. And it was like kind of rough at first, uh, but I mean, my life has not been any better since basically January of this year. Like it, I've been happier than I was at any point having you know complete freedom in most people's eyes yeah like it really you have to figure out what it is that, like you actually want out of this and this is where i was talking about like legacy and things like that like i know what my legacy like what i want that to be like i want to have like i want to have a family i want to have kids i want to like raise good people and that will be my legacy some people's legacy is like building a great company and like a giant corporation like leaving their you know permanent mark on the world and that's fine if that is what you want to do but if it isn't then again like why are you slaving away at this thing that you hate yeah there's no reason to yeah jay slayer said sons of the forest <laughs> giveaway winner can confirm salzavap gives yeah salzavap is very generous but always always has been yes yeah because you know, like who cares it's fine you can the number one thing i always told people is you can always make more money all you have to do, you just work harder. Like, just work more, just work harder. You can always make more money. Don't let money ever be the thing that, like, keeps you from doing the things that you like or, like, making the people around you happy. It's, it's crazy how focused our entire society has become on, like, just building wealth for the sake of building wealth. Like, there's no scoreboard at the end. There's no end game. Yeah. You're not going to finish number one. So why are you worried about accumulating all of this stuff? Like put it to use, do something with it. I, I, uh, I, I agree to a certain point. Like as long as you can uh, live life. As long as you can pay your bills. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, as long as, that, as that's the most important thing. That's all. Yeah. The, yeah. And there are actual studies about this. Like once you reach a th certain threshold, like basically the first threshold is like, do you have a, like, can you feed, like, can you feed yourself? Okay. You can feed yourself. Great. Then there's like a very gradual incline to the next benchmark which is like can you now house yourself okay well you can feed yourself you can house yourself your bills are paid for like you're not stressing about that stuff like that's a big spike in happiness yeah and then depending again depending on the kind of person you are like that increase either or that incline either continues because like you are someone that's driven by success and money is your gauge of success which is fine i don't begrudge people that we owe a lot of people whose motivation is money we owe them a lot i, I appreciate those things but 
there are other people like such as myself where it's like money is not the motivating factor and so once my bills are paid for and like once life is kind of chill the increase just gets like it, it becomes unnoticeable it's just like all right more money like okay i guess also for Lala, uh, Lala Palooza, I have no idea what that is. Uh, Maslow or hierarchy of needs. I don't know it. But, um, uh, I'm not familiar, but I can probably very uh, yeah, I can probably assume. I think I think the most valuable currency that most people don't are not aware of is time. Yes. Ye oh yeah. So this yeah, this was a a big thing for yeah. me. It's like the one thing you cannot buy is more time. Yeah. You can buy you can buy everything you want you can't buy more time that's that's huge just um small things man like either hanging out with the, the homies or family and whatnot like it does that doesn't equal to like you know with money stuff as well the richest richest person alive would spend it all for more time that's true yes that's very true yeah and so that's, like even in regards to that so I, I look at a lot of people who talk about like wasted time or like it, nothing is wasted as long as you like take something out of it like i look yeah. at like again we'll take like relationships as like a pre as an example like i look at some of the relationships i've had and it, it'd be very easy to go like that was a waste of time because it didn't end up like yeah. being e1 but it's like no you as long as you take some lessons out of that kind of stuff and yeah. yeah look there are some experiences you're going to have in life that are completely negative and there is nothing to learn and you are a victim and like that sucks i'm not saying that every experience can be a lesson but a lot of things that you would look at as having been a waste of time which is the most important thing like we said is time I, yeah they don't have to be they i learned how to, to pick up uh pick up on red flags <laughs> very yeah. well now <laughs> like yes yeah no i know what i don't want yeah like uh, at least i know that much your time yes but health you could yeah exactly like i've taken this well, is like one of the things like health is a big thing yeah um look i got type 1 diabetes there's nothing i can do about that but i could sure shit stop smoking a pack to a pack and a half cigarettes every single day like that would be a very good idea i should probably do that yeah have you ever tried like some people i don't know i don't know why this is a thing because this has never helped with me and nor has it ever helped with anyone else that i, that I know but everyone's always like oh why don't you stop cold turkey it's like that doesn't work for me i don't know no i've quit smoking a couple times and it was because i was so sick yeah and i could not smoke yeah or but the problem is now like smoking has become more of like a time filler yeah like uh i don't know i don't have anything else to do so i'll sit around and i'll smoke cigarette uh i get my and it's also like just a habit thing like i don't have a nicotine craving it's like i'll get my car i will smoke a cigarette as soon as i sit down in my car yeah um, now i feel that it's the same thing with me um i've stopped smoking since november uh, so which is almost almost a year now but um before that as well like even for uh, when i uh, was younger public transport if i had to take a bus there's nothing else to do right like i'm not, just not a person that goes on the phone all the time so mm -hmm. then i would just smoke uh, i just smoke a cigarette and it has nothing to do with like, oh, I really want a cigarette because of the, the value that it gives me. No, like I don't even notice the value if you, if I can be honest. Like only when I'm really stressed and I smoke a cigarette, I, I would notice the difference. I don't notice the difference if it's just day to day regular stuff. Then it's just a habit for me. That's for sure. Wait, you could smoke busted. You could smoke cigarettes on the public transportation. No, no, not in the bus, but like waiting for the bus. Um, oh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, okay. I was <laughs> no, gonna say, I was like, man, that's crazy. Yeah. I was wrong about all you euros. You guys <laughs> rule. <laughs> yeah. No, that's the ad. So smoking, smoking for sure um, was just more of a, a habit thing of like boredom and um, whatnot for sure. And it's crazy how like I would smoke an XL pack a day or more even, which it, it was actually 10 euros a day at minimum. Like if depends on if I got a second pack or not, but then it would be 10 euros a, a day. That's like so oh. much. Yeah, 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 trust me. I look at the amount yeah. of money. Like right now, you probably spend a lot because I know cigarette price went up and up and up for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's gotten out of control. Yeah. Yeah, but <laughs> I've had, uh, so uh, for a while there, I was doing the whole Tinder dating thing. And like I would meet up with girls. Like a, there's a, 
a few bars here that you can like still smoke in and so like we'd go there and they would not be super excited about the smoking party like yeah i'm smoking they're like do you smoke a lot and i'm like ah, i'd only smoke <laughs> i only really smoke when i'm bored yeah and like 10 minutes into the date i'm lighting a cigarette and they're like are you bored of me and i'm like ah no yeah. <laughs> i mean yes but no sorry <laughs> it's like yeah i don't that's yeah. that's another problem too. Smoking while you drink, big thing for me. Dude, no, that is hundred percent. I don't know why it just like it pairs like for all the other stuff. It's just like I don't know why I smoke actually. But with drinking, it actually does feel nice to smoke. Then I don't know why. There's just something that like is different when you smoke when you drink alcohol, where that if you inhale, if you inhale that like you notice the difference it makes. It's really strange. I can't explain it, but you, I know exactly what you mean for sure. Yeah. I I don't know what that is. I don't know if that's just a lowering of inhibition side effect where you're just like, I don't care. Just give me more things to put inside of me. But what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're not thinking about consequences of yeah. what you're doing. You're just like, yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. But yes, there's something very, very satisfying. You know, it's actually funny. So you have this fireplace thing going. Yeah. I, I try to do this like hypnotism thing. For quitting smoking like maybe 15 years ago something like that yeah and part of it was like playing this whole thing was playing this video like these fireplace videos and like this guy would like talk you through like this hypnotism thing oh yeah i know what you mean me. yeah but, like I, I i can't i can't do hypnotism stuff because i i just call bullshit on things way too quickly yeah uh, Jay Slayer, oh, uh, Lollapalooza. It's crazy how it de uh, developed in, in my youth. Most young people smoke nowadays. It's rare to see people with cigarette in hand on the streets. And then with Jay Slayer also saying, vape is the cool new cig. Smells good and people like the aroma. Highly customizable too, yes. I will say that for my for my personal thing, I, I swapped over to, to, to vaping and then I I went from um, a, like the highest nicotine available to then the lowest. Uh, well, not in one go, but like I, I built it. All the way down so i went to no nicotine and then just the normal uh fave liquid and then then since november i quit yeah so like after i think uh roughly three years or four years i did fape for a bit and it does smell good and all that uh i can see why it would uh why people would be uh more interested in doing that because smoking in general if you're, even if you're younger it just smells bad right like it's only when you get yeah. into it yourself that you don't mind it as much but uh with vaping though i will say like I, I kind of I kind of uh, I ca agree with Lala as well. Like, I really I rarely see people uh, smoke nowadays. It's kind of crazy. And even in, even even schools and stuff. Like um, if I if I look at um, schools or or even uh, a news report with schools or whatever, normally you would see like back in the day you would always see people smoking in the back and all that. Or maybe they hide it now. I don't know. I never really noticed people smoking as often. So I definitely do think that people smoke or vape a lot less than they used to. Yeah. Yeah. Probably in general. I don't know that vaping is necessarily i don't think vaping is the reason for that because i also know a lot of people who started vaping with zero nicotine stuff and then moved to nicotine and they're the kind of people that they would not have started smoking cigarettes like if they had to taste the whole thing like yeah they're just not those people i think it's just a that is one thing where like uh shaming has probably done a lot of good like shaming people that smoke cigarettes and just making it more and more difficult to be able to smoke cigarettes everywhere like that was a successful campaign like i i don't know how it is how no, it it's the same here yeah. Europe, but yeah well, yeah but like you know you used to be able to smoke in restaurants here yeah you could smoke in every single bar like they had smoking pits at high schools and stuff like that and they just got rid of all that stuff and they just made it more and more annoying to be able to do it and it's definitely shamed a lot of people out of it yeah and uh uh, 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 oh, uh real quick for jay slayer uh, uh jay slayer did the same with vaping worked to zero then started forgetting to vape and just quit and also said nicotine gives it a hardier and heavier hit i think that's why people work themselves up yeah i guess i actually have no knowledge about this like i don't really notice the difference between uh i do notice that um that my dad, for example, he also smokes, smoked, and then he's now vaping. He still vapes, I think. Uh, he uh, he also cannot. When I did do the the full nicotine thing and all that with vaping, he could not vape that at all. Like it would, uh, it would start to hurt for him. So I, yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a heavier hit for sure. I don't yeah. know. I don't know how to say or uh, for me like how 
I experienced it because I went from the hardest, um, the hardest, oh wait, I went from cigarette, cigarette, heavy smoking to like the highest nicotine in vaping and then down. So like, I don't know what it's like the other way around or anything. See, I, I, I tried to go to the vaping thing, but like yeah. my stupid monkey brain needs a cigarette to end to tell me like you're done smoking. Cause I tried to do the vaping thing and I, I was just hit the vape all day long until I got sick, like headache throwing up puking because i'm just dumb i'll just keep taking that thing without the cigarette ending yeah and and then like uh, i i don't know again the self-conscious thing like i look at people with vapes and i judge them so hard i just it's I don't know. it's it's I'm weird not smoking a cigarette dude you look cool I it's know, weird. I don't know what to say. Sorry to tell Dude, you. Vaping is so weird because, like, when you vape, right? I've noticed this as well. The younger people is whatever, but if if I see someone that is my age or older, right? Right. Like I, they no. It's just the thing about it is like they give you the nod, the nod of like, hey, what's up? But it's like, bro, I don't know you. You're just vaping, yeah. dude. Like, get get go away, man. <laughs> like, I don't like, know you. I don't know you, dude. Why are you giving me the nod? Cool. Is you know the nod? Yeah. The, every, everyone knows the nod if you know each other, right? But then like, yeah. they, they show their vape and they do the nod. I'm like, bro, it's not cool to vape, man. Like, don't do this to me. <laughs> Yeah, that is a very weird one. Yeah. I don't know. It happens a lot when I use the vape, yeah. Uh, that's... And so some people strange. some people will actually initiate a conversation when they see you vape. Because they're like, oh, I also vape. And then they show their thing, and I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> but Ooh, man. then they try to like have a conversation about it and all that. Yeah. I might start vaping just so I can start fighting nerds <laughs> that want to try and relate to me because we both vape. Dude. <laughs> I have I have one uh, small story. I went to a vape shop, and I'm very new, right? I went there with my dad as well, because uh, he also needed some liquid and stuff. And then I think I, I think we were talking about um, um, a new uh, vaping device, whatever. And uh, I was showing mine because I wanted a new one. And then, um, and then um, you can vape at certain watts or whatever, right? And then yeah. this this random nerd behind me came up and was like, "Oh, you vape that, but I but I vape this, which is like a higher higher number or whatever of, of what's something, yeah. bro. Like what? What the fuck, dude? Why are you trying to flex that you vape, dude? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not a flex, that's dude. Kinda where I, that's kind of where I checked out of smoking weed too. Now part of it was because I moved somewhere where weed was no longer legal, so it was gonna be a pain in the ass to get it. But yeah. like when when it was like strictly dabs, I was like, this is this is too complicated, man." people are over here like give me numbers shoot me numbers on what temperature they yeah they hit their dabs like i can't yeah I can't do this anymore man i mean i have the same thing with like certain strands and whatnot too if we're going to talk about marijuana and stuff like I, I for me it's very simple i smoke i smoke and i get a certain effect like i, I chill or like uh, a super like in my own zone type of effect and that's all i need to know i don't need to know about like all these kind of different percentages and whatnot that, that, that like you're talking that you just mentioned as yeah, well it's, yeah you know yeah some people are really into it like that yeah for sure some people are see i'm one of those guys that always like i'm very again i'm a very inquisitive person drugs was a thing that i was very into so naturally i was very inquisitive to it so I have a pretty good knowledge of that kind of stuff, and I realize like a lot of what's going on in those industries is like complete bullshit. And like I understand the the science behind diminishing returns and things like that. So someone would be like, oh, "This is like 95% THC dabs." I'm like, "Okay, I mean, I could either do that dab or I could smoke two bowls of just weed and yeah. not feel like I'm having to do this crazy shit with a." Blow dude, blow speaking blow. of crazy, crazy shit, right. dude. I don't know about you. If you have you also had friends that would always take it up a notch, much further. However you say it, like it got to a point where people um, nearly like at first you did the whole water, uh, the gravity bong, whatever, right? Which is also pretty intense. Yeah. And then like fun. yeah, and then it gets to the point where like people just keep experimenting and experimenting, and it got to a point where like yo dude, go smoke some weed and like and like uh, close close uh, like a motorcycle helmet, right? And then put it on and close it, right? So basically yeah. you're basically just choking at that point. Like <laughs> that's not good, man. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was getting the gas mask and all that stuff. Yeah. The steamroller gas mask. Oh my god, like, yeah. Oh, this is just a dry long pipe into a gas mask. Yeah, this sucks. Yeah. This yeah. Is the worst. It's uh, very dangerous. This I would never recommend it to anyone. But yeah. Oh, it's not dangerous. That's the problem. <laughs> the fact that like you can't overdose, so you may as no, well. No, but as in like you can't breathe. You, can. <laughs> you can't breathe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. I'm not worried about the about, about marijuana. I'm worried about not being able to breathe. 
looked like they're like, yeah, dude, close the motorcycle, dude. Like, keep it closed. Um, most yeah. helmet, yes, that kind of stuff. Like, I'm, I, I went there with a friend, and they were doing it with that way, right? And the, you can tell them, you can tell that they couldn't breathe at all. And I'm, I'm just, I'm sitting there with my friend, I'm, and we both looked at each other like we're not doing this. <laughs> Hell no, <laughs> these people are I crazy. Can't imagine just another dude blowing weed smoke into my motorcycle helmet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's how I go. <laughs> yeah, dude, like it's crazy man it's crazy and they would make sure that no that, that no air would escape either so like you're literally there just just like not being able to breathe dude just it's bros not smart bros. not smart yeah. yeah bros being bros yeah it's basically bros Duck being bros a helmet to your face that kind of stuff oh. yes <laughs> good god oh man yes no there's definitely been a lot of uh things where like bros being bros end up uh end up in spooky situations yes for sure Man, see, this is one of those things, I don't mean to be the old guy, but, like, this is one of those things I wonder, like, are kids still doing this kind of stuff? Yeah, dude, it's just in general, man, it's just, um, I know, I don't, I don't want to sound too old, like you said, but just, there's less adventure, I guess. All the adventures now take place online and stuff, right? Even, um, yes, yeah, yeah, because kids nowadays, yeah, of course, they'll still hang out eventually with other people, but it's a lot less. Like, back in the day, you, like... There, but there, you didn't really have as much communication, so therefore, like, you had to go out to to do adventures and all that. And like, yeah, I, I sound super old, and I hate it when people sound like that. But, but uh, I do really yeah. feel like that nowadays with social media, it's just like, hey, your adventure is just social media, and it's no no longer like, hey, what can we do outside somewhere or anything, or even inside. Like, it can even be inside, you know. That's what I wonder. I was about to say, I wonder if they're just smarter, because yes, when I was a kid, yeah, you'd see us all running around, all true. Just- Yes, so, but like I know they're still doing stuff. They have to be. There's no, no way they're. You like, brought up aren't still doing things. Maybe they're just smarter about doing it. Maybe we were the dumb ones. Yeah. No, you brought up a really valid point. I totally forgot. But the fact that like that all these kids nowadays, right? They might not actually do all those stupid things that we did ourselves because they already have access to seeing other people doing those stupid things. You know what I mean? Like on YouTube, you can see plenty of videos of people doing doing, doing dumb shit or whatever. Or like, hey, what, what will happen if I uh, if I do a backflip and it goes wrong, right? It's like, okay, well, you can see it on YouTube now already, so you don't have to do it yourself. I kind of forgot about that. About like, okay, so they don't have as many adventures, but it's like, yeah. but like they can already see it from other people, right? Like we cannot see that from other people from back in the day because internet wasn't as advanced as it was now, you know. God, I just now yeah. I'm just thinking about you saying backflip. I just <laughs> I saw yeah, a screenshot dude. of one of my favorite tweets. This guy's like, the human body is crazy. I could do 15 percent of a backflip and just fuck my shit up on this sidewalk. Right now. Yeah, yeah, you can. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess right? yeah. I, they're just finding different things to do. I'm sure. Yeah, it's just different. I also wonder then, like, what can people do nowadays? Because it's also at least in the area that I grew up in as well. It's they're getting rid of a lot of um, playgrounds and whatnot and just in general there just isn't as much to do like everything is now really evolved to like an online type of thing but then uh, like as a kid now like what would you do dude what would you do what do kids do nowadays yeah Fortnite? I, mean, I don't know <laughs> I, don't I mean know. yeah and like to get like i don't want to make this like the the drug the drug talk thing but like that that's something i have a lot of experience in and like there were a lot of uh, dark web markets and things like that that me and my friends were experimenting with. And a lot of that stuff has been completely shut down. Now, I've been away from it for probably four or five years, like not really that involved. Yeah. So I don't know what other things have come about, but like that was a big thing for us, like random research chemicals and like being able to buy. It's weird because it was one of those things where because there was a reputation attached to a seller it was almost like more responsible drug use because like obviously like this guy's not going to be selling drugs that like mess people up he's got reviews online he needs to be able to continue (laughs) to sell his drugs yeah so not only are they good but they're safe which is a whole nother tangent but like yeah those things don't really exist anymore the way they used to um so like yeah i I don't know Ah, drugs is a weird one where i'm like you should you should experiment with some things you should have some fun but i don't know if kids are doing that but i don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing either it's a weird i think i think uh, i think for me personally right um 
the whole drug thing, the, the worst I've ever done was just a pill of, uh, mm -hmm. I think it was uh, ecstasy or something, which also this channel does not promote the use of drugs. Um, yes, don't do drugs. Don't do drugs. Agreed. Very bad. Um, but that's, I think, the only thing that I've ever tried, um, other than marijuana and, and alcohol and stuff. Um, but the reason why I never went up to anything else is because I've always seen the effects on other people. So, like, I never really had to do it for myself, if that makes sense. Like, yeah. I, I, we, I think for you as well, maybe, that we kind of grew up in, in a time where there were so, so many sources um, of, like, movies or, like, documentaries and everything with, like, hey, drugs are bad and this is why. And you would see the most fucked up shit ever. And then that kind of, at least for me, it would steer me away. Yes. Now, for cigarettes and stuff, when, when you have the effects of, like, really fucked up pictures on the cigarette pack, that doesn't steer me away whatsoever. But, however, when it comes to, like, the harder drugs and, like, how it can, like change your life from like hey you, you're you have a successful job or you have a wife and kids and now you did this draw and now you did this and now you're homeless and you have nothing like that kind of stuff um that always made me not really want to try it because yeah that's like that, it kind of showed the effects of it already right yeah yeah maybe there's finally like enough evidence around there yeah where people are like yeah th there's enough that i can believe yeah and trust i think if you if you grow up if you grow up in an environment where that isn't really shown as often, let's say, because it really needs to be repetitive, like for it to be effective. Because if if it's uh, if it's not as much, I think people will still like go crazy on ex experimenting with drugs and whatnot. But um, from for uh, talking from personal experience, I would never want to exper experiment with um, harder harder drugs because I don't see the point of it. You know, like it's it's a bit different with yeah. like mushrooms and whatnot because that's like that's considered to be a, a, a softer, let's say. See, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's where you're getting into my my territory. See, I, I'm a big fan of the things that like I can make myself. I can be the source. Who's the source? I'm the source. So like, that's my cool stuff. Like that's the th those are the kind of things where I'm like, I hope people are still, I hope people are still trying to get into that kind of stuff only because like you should experience some interesting things. You should yeah you should try some shit in, in a safe in a safe way. In a safe environment yeah but like yeah I yeah think i think i think i think it's it should be okay as long as you have a decent environment for sure because like some people can be in a fucked up environment where like let's say they just jump off uh jump off, off a building because they think they can fly type of shit it's like you, right. if, if you do it with with if with the homies that you trust to not fuck you over or anything i don't think i don't think it should be too bad like obviously the harder drugs and everything no 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 but like um, some some hallucinogenic mushrooms and whatnot, I don't think is is too bad if you if you can find yourself in a safe environment, for sure. Yeah, and that's like I mean I I know the whole the Amsterdam meme, but it's like, <laughs> I think that was yeah. I'm glad that they have like I'm glad that they've tried to lock down a lot of that stuff. Yeah, and make it not so accessible and things like that. Like I went to Amsterdam. I don't know what was it like five years ago no probably a little bit longer probably six or seven years ago and it was with uh my girlfriend at the time and a bunch of her friends and like everybody got like truffles and all that stuff and like because i had had so much experience with that stuff like on my own i wasn't all that interested in doing it in the city and then but like i watch all of them do it and just like being menaces to society and i'm like this is terrible yeah. I, I do not condone this at all. Like, you're the last people that I want to, like, have any sort of engagement with. So I'm glad that they've kind of locked that down. So, so I see they lived up to the stereotypical tourist. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> tourist in the dude, yeah. oh, my God. It was it was so bad. Hmm. One of her friends, like, we were at we were at a coffee shop and we're all smoking. And, like, we're all people, like, we smoke weed every day. Like, it's not a big deal. But that kid had only eaten like gummy worms all day and had done like truffles earlier so then we're at a, co a coffee shop smoking and he like he goes to get up and he just eats shit just takes a whole table out <laughs> just immediately falls yeah. and i like me with my like social awkwardness i'm like i don't want to have anything to do with this i don't really know this guy i just go downstairs i tell the guy like at the desk like hey uh he just like passed out up there if you could do something to help him out and i just dip i just disappear to the other side of amsterdam girlfriend all pissed off at me i'm like what do you want me to do like i'm not gonna take care of your friend that was a horrible situation i told you guys not to do all of this it, it, it was bad yeah. So yes, they were very much the American stereotypes. <laughs> yeah. Well, for for us actually, it's like it's uh, 
for uh, um, uh, yes, I am Dutch. Sorry, um, I'm Dutch, and what we think of people uh, tourists in Amsterdam tends to be actually uh, British and and American. Yes, yes. That, British and Americans. Yeah, yeah, Briti- yeah. Because Americans are like, ooh, Amsterdam, Europe, let's go. Which yes. is so weird to me. Like, I, like I don't know the laws. I don't know the laws in. in in the uk but like i imagine they're not as lax as a lot of areas in the us are they yeah. are very lax like all of us we're coming from like southern california which if you know anything about like weed culture like yeah blah blah yeah. blah like california weed like big deal we've all been smoking weed since we were all like 12 years old and still they were so excited to be able to go to a coffee shop i'm like you realize this is we do this every day at home <laughs> Just a different Not environment. A yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it, was, it was very interesting to me. Oh, also, Malin, oh, hi. Yes, tourists are annoying. Yeah, tourists um, definitely, it's gone to the point where I personally believe that there are probably more tourists than actual Dutch citizens in uh, in uh, in uh, Amsterdam. Sorry. Yes. It's kind of crazy. I, I, ha- I brought a couple of friends to Amsterdam before. And the um, crazy thing is that actually most people not it's not even english or german no it's just everywhere i go everyone speaks french too but i never see people talk about french uh tourists but they there do be a lot yes i know at the border um i had a um i had an adventure um close to the south of the netherlands close to the border as well and there the coffee shops also did not allow uh people from other countries so you have to show like a resident per- permit or the or your dutch uh id um, if you wanted to buy weed there, because other people would not be allowed, is because uh, there was too many tourists and stuff, um, or people that would, yeah, yeah, yeah tourists also that people that just cross the border and just buy weed real quick. And um, but they but they can be really annoying. It's definitely something I've noticed. Like very loud people. They're just like, oh my god, we're finally able to buy weed, kind of people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a big fan of restricting those people. Absolutely. Yes. But I think like even if it wasn't about weed in general like just in it's ge- no, in general in yeah general. in general is yeah. also uh, it's really annoying yes yeah, wasn't like there, there oh is... here uh yeah, so like so like where i live is a very tourist heavy area and it's nothing to do with weed like weed is like it's not even medicinal out here it's crazy it's actually insane if you think about it but like it's just it's it's actually worse because it's all alcohol it's all surrounded around alcohol, which is just terrible. But it, like, I I hate tourists so much. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, initially targeting British men, <laughs> British men, aged yeah, eighteen thirty-five. Yeah. Something about this. Oh, yeah, yeah, interesting. Like British British yeah. passports were like had extra rules against them. Coming to Amsterdam for a messy not for a messy night plus getting trashed is hundred forty euro fine plus criminal record. The ads captions say it's adding stay away crazy 20 million tourists every year yeah dude i went to the red light district as well because naturally i am oh, dutch it's it's not interesting whatsoever as well it's i'm glad word, you said it yeah. I'm, I'm glad you said it it's like there's nothing interesting of like the seeing some people behind a red like a window dude it's like okay well and especially even when we went so like i actually i really like am i liked amsterdam because i like a walkable city yeah yeah oh but, that's the like, netherlands yeah that was my favorite part was just being able to walk around and yeah. like just look at stuff but like we went over to the red light district that was the one time where like i truly felt like just a tourist like in a zoo just like being herded by masses of people and there was nothing going on so yeah. like i grew up you know my dad in the air force like him telling the stories of like amsterdam in the 80s and like early 90s well, I guess it actually would have been like, yeah, mid eighties when the red light district was like still a thing. And I was like, okay, that could be interesting. And like, I'm not going to partake of those things, but like, I'm a big fan of like seeing new stuff. So I was like, that would actually be cool to see. Like, I want to see that and go. And it's like, none of that is there. It's just like expensive, shitty food 
and masses of people just crowding yeah. into each other. I was like, oh man, sucks. Amsterdam. Yeah. It's, speaking of it being crowded, there's definitely a lot of small streets where it's just like you're waiting in queue just to <laughs> just to go through, dude. It's crazy, man. It's it's not, it's really not enjoyable. I think as a Dutch person in particular, like we've already have coffee shops everywhere anyway. So for me, coming from Rotterdam. Like visiting Amsterdam for the first time as like an 18 year old or, or uh, yeah I was 18 um, and being able to go into coffee shops I'm just like why, why can't we just do this at home <laughs> it's more relaxed yeah there's way too many people everywhere like if you go to a uh, like to, to, to uh, give a bit of a of an example for the difference between Amsterdam coffee shops and, uh, and I'm sure there's also good good ones in there too but the majority of coffee shops all across the country um, you can have like um, a more relaxed environment that's already one thing because normally it's really full there anyway um and then others like extra stuff that you can do like for example playing pool or or like sometimes they'll like have a tv for you and you can just they give you the remote and you can just watch tv there or um or or, or video games even sometimes they have a they have a ps4 or whatever console as well and you can just play that with the, with friends too and that's like a lot, that's a really good perks to have and in amsterdam you just have a coffee shop with weed and you can sit down and it, it's almost as if you're at a bar kind of thing but not a bar yeah. where like it's interesting because you can meet other people no it's just a bar where you're just there with the same with like your friends and stuff which is also okay but then like why not do that somewhere else you know yeah, yeah no no uh, you should totally go to a place where you can just like watch an american get way too high and pass out <laughs> and wipe a whole table out like that's a super enjoyable yeah. experience right yeah Malin said, I'll tell you, yeah, I've only I'm been a handful of times in Amsterdam. I'm not talking about nightlife, but going shopping, whatever. Only a handful of times. I hate Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah same, same here, same here. Yes. Yeah. I mean, honestly, to, like the, the super autist in me, the only thing I enjoyed about Amsterdam was like checking my phone, seeing what time it was and seeing what time <laughs> the uh, the trolley was supposed to be there. Yeah. And always being right on time. And I was yeah. like, oh, this is amazing. I love this. Yeah. Public dude, public transport in the Netherlands is is phenomenal, dude. I, okay, I it's can only talk, yeah. I love it. I can only talk about the uh, the the what I, what I would call the modern part. Uh, it's also from EU. No, he's from the US. Yeah, he said so, uh, Southern California. You said? Uh yeah. I mean, I like young kid Louisiana, so the south oh, of the US, and then like my formative years uh, out west. Yeah, California. Oh. Yeah. Now I'm in East Tennessee. Oh, he did mention he was born in Germany. Yes, yes. I was born in Germany. I, I'm not a super well-traveled person, but I'm someone that, again, like growing up on the internet type of thing. Like I've been exposed to a lot of different cultures and things like that. So uh, that's a really I'm good thing. Totally naive to things. Yeah. Perkins sells about from you at Terracol. It sells about one of us. Well, yes and no. Barely. He was born there. I was yes. Born, yeah, I was born in the Air Force Base in Lanstel, Terracol. I moved, we moved away from Germany when I was like, I don't know, eight months old. How old is Salzabab? 33. I'll be 34 in November. Old man. Yeah. That counts in my book. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now that I have the approval of Terracon, that's all I ever wanted in life. There you go. You're officially a European now. We're all German, more Yay. specifically. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. No, um, but yeah, Amsterdam and Rotterdam, it's just, yeah, the Netherlands, overall, I feel like you can definitely, you know, I, I will give, give credit though, if it comes to like museums and stuff, Amsterdam is all right. Like, I, I like it. It's yeah. all right. Yeah. No, like, I, I enjoyed that stuff. Like, yeah. I was going to say, like, I hate tourists, but I've also like learned to embrace more, like when I go to other places, like just be the tourist, just yeah. do the things, enjoy the things, like who cares? Again, that whole like getting over your self-consciousness, like, Yes, I am a tourist. I don't live here. I don't know what this thing is. So, like, I'm going to go to the things that everybody see, says you should go and see. It, and I'm just going to have a good time. It sells about travel EU or only the uh, Holland? Not the Holland Netherlands. Uh, that trip, we went to Oslo and we went to oh. uh, Amsterdam. Most of our time was spent in Oslo. Why Oslo? Uh, cheap flights. It was like oh, okay. round trip. I think it was like 200 bucks 200 dollars i don't know what that is i mean pretty close in euros they're pretty close but again this was like eight years ago seven years ago something like that that's not too long ago yeah but mailing left why confused um, oh i don't care are we about to fight mailing oh <laughs> 13 yeah 1300 yeah yeah Oof. exactly 
Yeah, well, we also, we bought these tickets, like, two years out in advance. Two years? Yeah. Damn. Okay. We are yeah. just like, yeah, whatever. We'll just buy tickets. Yeah, this was nonstop, too. We, oh, that was the worst, dude. Getting back to smoking. Oh, my God. A 16-hour flight from Los Angeles to uh, Oslo. Oof. Oh, you I, know what the trick is? Actually, mm -hmm. I know what the trick is, and I've done this multiple times. It's it's sleeping. <laughs> if you're able yeah, to get no, yourself no, to I sleep, yeah. <laughs> it's all good. I can always sleep. No, okay, I say that yes, but also no because it sucks. Okay, I've changed. When I was, let's say, before I turned 27, let's say, I was always able to sleep on demand. Like if I if I was out in public, uh, public transport, or whatever, then I would have to, like sit in a bus for like 30 minutes or like an hour or whatever. I could I could fall asleep and wake up exactly when I needed to. <laughs> Uh, it's a certain skill for sure that I developed and smoking for example if I had to make a um, uh, a, a long travel thing whatever I could also just easily do that and just fall asleep and then wake up I don't know it's always it's like it's like a superpower that 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 is not as great because a superpower normally would be like oh I want to go back in time or whatever right it's like no for me I can fast forward time because I can just sleep <laughs> yeah no that's uh yeah. yeah. When you actually were talking about superpowers the other day, I almost thought about that one too. Because I'm also coming like, so like we did this whole like cross country, like drive across the country trip. It's a total of like 32 hours driving. And like, yeah. I, we left, we just left like spur of the moment. We were supposed to leave like two days later, but our schedule's cleared up and we're like, we could just leave tonight. So we just like left tonight, like that night and after a full day of work and i drove like 10 hours slept two hours at a rest stop the whole time my girlfriend's sleeping so she sleeps like the whole 10 hours at this rest stop plus the two hours i'm there she wakes up for an hour on the drive i drive another eight hours so at this point i've driven i've been driving for 20 of the last 24 hours she's been asleep the entire time somehow and then we switch and i sleep for like two hours in the car and then like i'm up again like i don't know but no, she has the ability to like fall asleep within two minutes anywhere. It, it blows my mind. I it's a good I skill. That. <laughs> it's a good skill, yeah, man. No, it, that is the ultimate superpower. Yes. It, it would be fantastic. I, I was dying. It also gets pretty bad because I know, um, for, as an example, my dad, um, I will turn into my dad. I just already know that. I already know that. But my dad will, will like fall asleep like at a family party or whatever like he would just sit and he would just fall asleep and he doesn't mean to oh, yes yeah no that i will do 100%. <laughs> oh you also do that like, yeah that i can do if i'm in like if i'm around people i'm comfortable with like yes that's why like my my like uh social events with family and stuff they're always short and it's not because i don't want to be around it's because like no nah, i'm falling asleep <laughs> like yeah like, i gotta get out of here but, yeah. yeah, like, as far as, like, traveling and stuff like that, I don't know. I I can't do it. I'm also, I'm not super tall, but, like, I'm six feet tall. So, I'm tall enough where it's, like, uncomfortable to sleep in a car for me. I can't, like, curl up on a seat like a little cat. You know what a random fun fact is? Hmm. Up until I was 14 years old, I had never seen a hill in my life. Because <laughs> <laughs> the Netherlands is flat. Like, there, there are no hills yeah. in the Netherlands whatsoever. That's true. So, yeah. When we went to Benin and we finally had to like like uh, uh, drive a bit, right? Um, I was actually kind of terrified because we had to go down a hill, and I'm like, dude, this is scary. But I've never been down a hill or up a hill. <laughs> yes. But yeah. There is one. There's hill. one hill in the Netherlands. Is there? Prove it. Prove Which one? It. I don't believe that. Which one? Or is it probably somewhere in Limburg or something? No. Just Dutch thing. Yeah. No, I've never I've never seen a hill in my life. The Falserberg? I don't know. I've never heard of that. All right. All right. No, the Falserberg. Oh, it is in Limburg. Yeah, okay. Makes sense. 322 meters above uh, 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 an NAP. Yes. Or oh, whatever that is. Yes. Thank you. I used to... I live... I, I used to live dangerously close to the lowest point in the Netherlands. Or what used to be the lowest point in the Netherlands. In Rotterdam. Uh, and then eventually there was another uh, point somewhere else that was uh, even lower. But for years and years and years, that was the lowest point, and I lived really close to it. So if ever we would flood, I would have been dead. Yes, 100%. There's no way I would have survived. I mean, wouldn't the bigger concern be that there's now a place lower than you? 
<laughs> what's going on over there that i don't know more frightening to me than living in the lowest place uh yeah uh lowest point i don't know i don't know what you call it lowest yeah because i plus polder yeah this thing i used to live close to that and that was um super oh this is a really nice picture brought it on yes wow anyway um yeah that's i've always thought about it man because like I like my I don't swim that I can't swim that well I can swim but not that well and um I feel like it should be mandatory for every Dutch person to to learn how to swim because it's cra or at least if you're west if you're west of the Netherlands you should learn how to swim because uh yeah it's it's all below below water sometimes I look at the the pictures of the Netherlands of like um how much land we've created and just think to myself like that's that's fucking crazy man like that came out of not that came out of nothing the half of the country just came out of came out of nothing dude and it's just um, wait you mean like like it's man-made yeah yeah like, it's like oh, half okay. the country's like man-made just like out of the water just to pump it out dude yeah oh that's Dutch wild. technology yeah what, what they make it out of though wait um like they just, oh, they just pump out the water yeah one area oh uh, gotcha um okay. how, how would I even google this I don't know my brain is not functional at the moment we do have great dams. Yeah, when it comes to water uh, uh, defense uh, technology for like dams and stuff, I know for sure because I've I've been to I've talked about it with other people. Um, like for example in Benin and uh, other places, the Netherlands are are leading are leading that technology of like um, uh, water defense. I guess I guess you would call it. Yes, we have the best in the world. Yeah. Great yeah. dams. I'm a big fan of dams. I've been on a big uh, big beaver thing lately. Yeah. So a part of like going around in nature and stuff, every time I see trees in a river, I'm like, oof, where are the beavers? I'm always looking for beavers. Okay, maybe I said half, maybe not half. <laughs> but, but it's a significant amount, I guess. Or am I not looking at the right thing? I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. Um... Oh yeah, here, this is yeah, a good one. This is a good one yeah. for sure. No, like, that's a lot. It's a big chunk. Yes. Yeah, I mean it's a chunk. It's a big chunk. Yeah. Good. I was, I was thinking like there was this, there's an actual island in the Bay of San Diego, it, and it's just built out of, it's garbage. Like at night, it just smells like garbage. Like that, basically, it was just a landfill that they turned into like an island yeah that's what i was thinking when you're talking about like man-made i'm like okay oh so no no they built this <laughs> then like what did they do to yeah. make this <laughs> yeah no no yeah it's it, it's also like kind of spooky to think about that like if one person just decides to be a dickhead that uh we most people in the nuns would not have a good time <laughs> for sure if they were to do something yeah. to uh our water stuff yes oh yeah yeah no that, that kind of stuff yeah. is is terrifying i was watching like some some sort of documentary or something on like power grids and stuff and there was this like uh this cybersecurity expert talking on there and he was like man like we are not ready <laughs> like if if things really got crazy like if we're talking about like global war things it's like no one is prepared for like their entire power grid being shut down no one has defenses set up for that yeah it's like okay well thanks that's an awesome thing for me to fall asleep thinking about oh but in general we're not ready for anything at all nobody is yeah a anything no, it's terrible. whether it's a war so or like or like the uh, climate and whatnot like no nothing yeah. yeah now i always think about this all the time i'm like you know they're like space stuff freaks me out because we know nothing we can't do anything about it like okay here's a good thing to think about yeah. if you because we're kind of at the point we're getting there with technology for like deflecting like uh meteorites and things like that yeah but not really like we're, we're kind of fucked uh if you knew a meteorite was coming because we're gonna know like well in advance we can plot this stuff out like we know it's coming so you're gonna have heads up depending on how much warning like you know global governments want to give people because pandemonium is going to break out as soon as everybody knows yeah. what would you do let's say you're given like a week like you know in a week everything is coming to a close what are you doing with that week i'm gonna i'm gonna fuck up the rich people 
<laughs> like, I'm be honest, dude. It's, it's crazy, man. That's like everyone's thing is like, I'm going to fucking cause mayhem, dude. Yeah, I'm, yeah. It's like everyone 100%. is so close, so close to like just going mass murder. <laughs> well, okay, no, I wouldn't go that far. But like, 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 you know, like I would grab the stuff that I would need from the people that, that have too much, let's say. Yes, yeah, but for sure. Need, what do you need for a week? That's the thing. For it's done in a week. This is, this is good. This, uh, damn, damn. That's actually, I have never thought about it like that, actually. But I know for sure that rich people would have what I need, for sure. Yes. But you don't need anything, man. It's over. It's or, over. Yeah, no, but like, just like to enjoy myself a little bit, you know, to, to, yeah, to get the last okay. experiences, for sure. Yes. Like, uh, like, dude, I, w I would, I would roll up to, to, to a rich man's place and just join his game, his gaming PC and everything. It's only a week, right? I can I can still I can still play Kenshi for a bit, you know. <laughs> Do you need a better PC for yeah. playing Kenshi? <laughs> okay, maybe not Kenshi, but okay. Let's say VR, dude. I've always wanted to do like better better VR stuff, right? Like, I have a VR thing, but yeah. it's not really. I have like budget budget VR. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I would I would I would definitely do that. Yeah, hundred percent. Yes. Hmm. What else would I do? Dude, I know for sure I would like I'd be the, see. You know how everyone's like, dude, I need to go to the grocery store and just get a lot of toilet paper or whatever. Now I would get all the drinks that I've always wanted for my whole life that I've wanted the big supply of. I'm gonna get all the aloe juice. I'm gonna get all the guava juice, dude. You name it. Yeah. I'm taking it, dude. Yes. And all the yeah, deep fried food. No. All the deep fried food. Yeah. I'm taking it, dude. I'm taking the whole refrigerator with me. <laughs> in the freezer. Yeah, yeah, I'm terrible about like not <laughs> buying it. Like just not caring. Like when all the COVID stuff happened, everyone was freaking out about like toilet paper and soap. Yeah. I was like, I don't know, man. I guess I don't wash my ass or wash my hands. Like, no. Wait, you actually were you freaked you were freaked out about the the potential of not having? No. Oh, okay, no, yeah. No, no, I was not. Yeah. Look, I look at the end of the day, like turns out, like maybe I was more right. I I don't know if that's a way to put it to not be so freaked out, but I yeah. probably should have been more concerned than I was. Cause I had no no worries. See, I was already like fully living the like I just live in my apartment. Yeah. I have no connection to the outside world. And everyone was freaking out about having to be locked down. And I was like, <laughs> Welcome to my world, normies. Let's see how you do. <laughs> the thing is the thing with um so, like I should have been more worried. The thing is the thing why I was not worried about the toilet paper situation back then was because um <laughs> I mean my family being uh, 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 Indo, Dutch, Indonesian, whatever. Yeah. Um, like we always have a bottle of water next to the toilet for the people that do it that way. So. <laughs> yep. So yeah. So I was never worried. Well, that, yeah. That that was not the thing. It was, again, I don't know. Maybe I should have just been more. There was definitely something going on, and I was completely tuned out. I didn't even realize. I I didn't know. It probably like all that stuff got real serious over here probably in like mid February of that year. Yeah. I didn't even realize anything was happening until like April. And I was like, why is everyone wearing masks at the grocery store? <laughs> I was very confused. Yeah, the mask situation you know you know what I you know what I dislike though? It's like the people that didn't take it serious, man. It's like you know Yeah, like, yeah I look, I don't I get that. I was one of those people like I was one of those people, I didn't take it serious, but I also don't want to cause waves. And yeah. so, like, I'm one of those people, like, if I can do a tiny little thing that's going to make other people less uncomfortable. Yeah. And it's not an inconvenience to me, like, fine. I don't care. I'm, I'm not that guy that's, yeah. like, like. I was talking about, like, um, um, for, like, not, not about, like, whether or not, like, this, if it was real or not. Because some people were like, oh, COVID's not real, whatever. Not even right. about that. But just about the fact of, like, hey, if, if, if everyone is saying, like, keep one and a half meter distance, then please keep one and a half meter distance. And some people were, like, nearly yeah. breathing in your neck. I'm like, bro, can you please back the fuck up, dude, in the right, grocery right. store? Yeah, yeah. yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah, no, yeah. exactly. Like, again, yeah. I, I, like, I didn't know the efficacy of any of that stuff. And, yeah. You know, like, if it made other people, like, comfortable. Or, like, so, like, when I moved out here, East Tennessee was a unique area, uh, even within the U.S., Mm -hmm. uh, like I know a lot of people will be like oh the US didn't give a shit and all this stuff and like probably not for the most part but like it was like there were a lot of like major major lockdowns this area like closed down for like a week and they're like I don't know man only 10,000 people died in a week I guess it's not that big of a deal which is just wild when you think about it yeah. but like so we were like fully open to tourism I was working at that bar like moonshine distillery thing and like our place had like a policy of like you have to wear a mask or whatever when you come in 
And the people that would be upset at me, like, at the door telling them they have to put a mask on, or, like, the people going on Twitter, like, yelling at, like, Applebee's, which is, like, just a shitty, like, chain restaurant. Like, just yelling at Applebee's employees, getting mad at them for not putting their mask on. I'm like, do you think this guy that makes minimum wage is the one making these policies? Yeah. I think you're maybe a little bit upset at the wrong people here. Like, I don't know, man. Maybe just chill. Terraquan with the Sag. Oh, Terraquan. Don't be Sag. It's all over now. <laughs> yeah, it is all over now, yeah. It's, it's all over now. That's kind of crazy to think about, too. Like... I, like I literally had a job because of COVID, like and the the whole COVID test planning thing, and I was just like, it's nothing. If you have it, you can still go to work and whatnot. It's crazy. Yeah, no, it um, like my my girlfriend at the time, she had like, she had the most useless degree ever. It was in like public health, like nobody cares about public health, but like then COVID hits and it like skyrockets her career, like launches her, like she all of a sudden becomes like the most important person because she's like running COVID test clinics. It was very fucking weird. Yeah. Yeah, dude, the world was weird for a minute there. I kind of liked it, man, to be honest, because like... I mean, I, I did too. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> for once, for once, it was normal to, to be that gamer, you know, like the one that just doesn't really yeah. go out much other, other than groceries. It's like, it's really nice to just now, like it being normalized that like, hey, I, maybe I don't want to go outside. <laughs> You know, because yeah. everyone's always like, oh, go outside, go outside. But like, what for, man? Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, Back then. It, it also brought up like a fun thing. So what I did for a while was uh, go back like last year I was doing this, going back uh, to some podcasts and like listening to podcast episodes during the pandemic and just like seeing how it affected people like is is very interesting to hear people talk about it. Like, I, I don't know knowing what you do like knowing what you know now type of stuff yeah just seeing how it like changed people is very interesting for me yeah no i think um the changes that it made for sure um is huge because uh, i for one like my uh, my company went bankrupt i think this is a big thing that was just completely brushed over and forgotten about but like a lot of a lot of companies uh where i could talk about the branch i worked in it was like uh, big events like building up events and whatnot yep. Com companies that were involved with like any types of events now longer no longer had a job because it just they weren't allowed to have a ha do that kind of stuff so I, they literally went bankrupt now of course i did i did receive a nice paycheck of course uh, while uh, while they went bankrupt because then of course you know it's not their fault so like i did get a nice paycheck um but then afterwards um and just like just because uh, that happened right like i just lost my job and everything and i had a blessing of like hey but here's another job and <laughs> it happened to be the COVID test planning thing too so in a way like yeah it's fucked up for a lot but it also uh uh, it also opened up some jobs. I do think, of course, more jobs were lost than gained, of course. It makes sense. Uh, yeah. But in my situation, I was very fortunate to have uh, profited from both. Yes. Yeah, and just as, like, a testament to, like, how my life kind of works, uh, I had a job that I most certainly would have been laid off for COVID stuff and yeah. would have been paid for that. Uh, I quit that job, like, two weeks before they locked everything down. Oh. <laughs> Damn. which is just that's just kind of how my life goes like yeah. uh unfortunately you know, just missed out whatever it's fine um it's also so rich well uh no i like oh. i have no problem talking yeah he, about he mentioned it earlier he mentioned it earlier as well that's why I, like i don't know if it's kind of weird to talk about but um, he did mention it earlier about how um with the money that he had he donated everything to to uh, uh ch children's hospitals and uh you said uh females well, shelters? Yeah, like women shelters. Shelters, yeah. 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 Nope. Yeah. Uh, I'm not rich. Like, I'm fine. I'm comfortable. My bills are paid for. Like, all my stuff is, like, taken care of. Like, I have some, like, hard assets. I have property. Things like that. Uh, but, yeah, it's nothing. Like I said, it should have been one of those things, like, at any point, I could have just, like, never worked for the rest of my life like could have taken care of my family for the rest of my life didn't end up doing that uh, it's not that i don't have to worry anymore for record it's that like if i continue to work right now uh i don't like i make enough money now where like i'm okay but what i'm saying is at the time had i just had the money like had i just taken the money that was available to me 
uh, then yes, I would have, like, I could have just done whatever I wanted with the rest of my life. It wouldn't have mattered. Yeah. Like, yes, now if I lose my job, I have to worry. But this is also something like, I can go and do that same thing all over again. Like how we were talking about, like, how nothing is wasted. Like, you don't waste time. Um, like, no time is wasted as long as you take something from it. I learned a lot of skills. Like, I could go back to, like, trading stocks, crypto, all that stuff. And, like, I could go back to making that money. But it wasn't a lifestyle. I already know that's not a lifestyle that makes me happy. Like, I know the way to be successful, at least in the way that, like, how I operated in that space, was putting everything into it. Like, I lost relationship, like, friendships, family, relationships, like, falling apart because it took every bit of me being involved in that space to be successful at it. And I can do that again, but it didn't make me happy. So why would I go back to that route? Yeah. And like I talked about before, like I have a very obsessive and addictive personality. You know, some people would say, okay, well, you know, it didn't make you happy to make that much. Why don't you just do it a little bit? But it's just not in me. I know myself well enough. Like I can't, it's a, I'm either all in or all out type of guy with that kind of stuff. So I don't know. I went down that route. It didn't make me happy. It hopefully helped a whole lot of people out uh, later, but it's not going to be the thing that like ends up making me happy. So um, I don't know. I have different goals. And, uh, what's uh, uh, another topic? Because Mailin May mentioned the amount of people that discovered gaming due to COVID is crazy. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to touch up, up on that as well. I also benefited uh, a little bit from the whole uh gaming boom and twitch boom and whatnot because everyone was sitting at home doing nothing twitch obviously had more had more uh, uh viewers than ever more streamers than ever and all that and that's kind of also where, where, I, where I grew of course and back then uh, a very important thing was also uh page mentioned it to me pages uh my friend slash manager for the streaming stuff what is there to manage you can make that joke yes but uh, yes officially uh, uh, i would consider page my manager yes and she even said as well that um yeah don't 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 rely on this because it's just a boom because of covid and but i i kind of always forgot about that and it like way later it, it hit and it's very visible of course that it's no longer the same as it used to be as well but yeah definitely back when uh uh covid made everyone sit at home and all that yeah it, it, twitch and everything skyrocketed like crazy it, it was good for it was it was good for the internet for sure but of course bad because covid yes yeah, I mean, in a selfish way, I, it was great for me because all my friends that couldn't necessarily afford to just like live on Discord and Twitter and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, all of a sudden they could. That's all they had to do. I was like, great. Yay. All my friends around all day have like long, like, you know, 72 hours straight voice chats of people coming in and out and stuff. It actually helped a lot of like us internet people socialize more because now we had the free time yeah yeah it was nice man it was nice and yeah long story short covid good that that's endorsed by by coach COVID. oh no 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 covid not good no, no, no. i was waiting for you to finish finish sense but no 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 covid not good no 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 um no but like uh, there were also depending on uh depending on uh, on where you were in the world um uh, it could also be a good thing because um in the netherlands there were some um uh what do you call them? What do you call that? Some um, some aids, some financial aids, and that was actually really surprising to me because I've always been of the opinion that like nobody cares about people, <laughs> like when it comes to like governments and whatnot. But uh, the Netherlands, they did try a little bit. Like I'm not gonna say sit here and like pretend as if they they single handedly solved the whole crisis. No, far from it. But there was some financial aid for for people, uh, a little bit, and um, it's not a lot either. It's not a lot to like, but it was nice to see that there was a little bit from it. Um, Yes, that's not true. Uh, this is a lot. Yeah, yes, yes, and no. Like, you do have to fit in certain categories and whatnot, at least back then. Like, don't get me wrong. Then there's, there's a lot for us in general, but I'm talking about specifically COVID. Um, yeah. Yeah, specifically well, about I, the COVID situation. I was going to say, too, with May Lynn saying, like, felt bad for people. Like, yes, there were a lot of people that got, but same situation. Like, if you fit into certain categories, like, a lot of people actually, honestly, were better off from those layoffs and it's one of those like meme -y things that you get from people now because like right now what's happening is the u.s has a labor shortage uh and it's like part of it's mean but part of it is true it's like 
people started to get paid to not go to work and it's been hard for some people to transition out of that and want to go back again and it's a lot of people doing things they don't want to do yeah and then they got paid to not have to go do that anymore and they're like fuck this man like yeah. i hated that job like why would i ever want to go back and do that kind of work again yeah um, so people did there were like i would it's kind of like how everything works where it's like the people at the top are unaffected the people at the very bottom sometimes end up benefiting from crisis situations and then the people kind of in the middle they just get lost they 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 don't benefit from anything they end up paying more into things to help and they get kind of bitter and i, I don't know it, yeah it's all kind of a mess like obviously that's never a good situation it's, you know a ne worldwide global pandemic is never good but like no one handled it very well i don't think yeah no the thing about uh, what malin said um like in general no i do agree that in the netherlands if you are in a in a fucked up situation that you will get help that that's for sure but i meant specifically about the covid situation that like you ha you did have to be uh from a certain category in order in order to get help then yeah. because like a lot of yeah. it was even on the news as well that a lot of uh, individual business owners and stuff didn't really get much support from it but um uh, like overall so like again like overall yes you do get helped in the netherlands a lot uh, by the government but um specifically for the covid situation there are a lot of people just uh, didn't really like a lot of people just didn't lost their jobs and just didn't really get much in return for it that kind of stuff yeah yeah, yeah we had a lot of like uh there was a lot of scam stuff that came up afterward in the u.s of like people claiming their companies like they basically established like llc's yeah like, in the middle in the middle of the pandemic just so they could claim like their small business failure and get a big payout which okay like that sucks but at the same time like i'm a big I, like i don't like the government man i just don't i've always been that guy i don't like it if you can take advantage of the government and get that money like yes technically you're taking advantage of other people around you no but here's the thing right huh? you, you, like i agree i agree with you as well because the thing is right like everything in life or whether it's games or, or like just life in general it's just like people will always take it take advantage of of, of things um so like why wouldn't you right like yeah when, yeah just take it just take it's it there. yes especially it's something like that because something like that it's it, you're not directly taking money from anybody like governments are gonna just they're going to create more money that, and it's going to cause a problem for everyone else that's going to have a ripple effect down to every single person but at the end of the day like you're not stealing money from your neighbor directly you're indirectly taking money from other people which you know what that's yeah. just again more of a testament of a like shitty system that everyone has set up if but, i if i can give a small example for like uh twitch for example when people would talk about like uh embedded views and whatnot about that like being kind of a right. cheat for 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 streamers and all that but i'm just like well you like if you want to really get, if if that is your goal for more viewers and and um, get success from streaming th um from streaming like that if that is your goal then yes you can do that and i don't feel bad i don't f feel not bad i don't feel um uh, a type of way when people do it i myself don't do it and it's pretty you can you see that in the viewer account as well but like if people do it though like i don't mind and i'm not going to sit here and be angry about it and i feel the same thing with like government aid and whatnot like if if there is government aid that you can receive then why not could get it you know yeah i've always been the fan like, yeah and th this like comes up in like workplaces and things like that people being upset at like other people that they view as lesser than them making more money i'm like no the, the problem is you should make more money you should take advantage of more situations that are afforded to you yeah. i'm never going to be upset at somebody like working the system in their favor like yeah. all that means is like there's something that i can work into my favor and i'm not doing that like yeah. it, look there are a lot of like shitty billionaires out there in the world that don't do anything uh to benefit the people around them but i I mean at some point like man you're making that kind of money i gotta look at what you're doing and go like what like what am i missing here because surely i can do some of what you're doing 
to yeah. emulate some of that success. And that doesn't speak to anything of like old money inherited wealth. Well, you know, some of those things are out of your control. Uh, but I don't know. Yeah, what Malin said, uh, received 1800 euros in the span of a year for the energy bills because we didn't have a price platform, which is, um, they couldn't make an, uh, I, I guess they couldn't make an estimated guess estimation they couldn't make an estimation as to like how much money they should give right that that's basically what she's saying so many pe many people went from 200 euros uh a month to 800 to, from 200 euros a month to 800 euros a month um uh, and Malin said i can't work i've lived from my savings for almost seven years right now i'm living from benefits like a limit yes you yeah, know i also have ever um i have i had a friend um ever since i was 16 or something and all that and he would also always just live from off the government and that's what he would do but however it doesn't come it doesn't come with all gl glorious easy living there were some times where like uh, for d due to some um, debt and whatnot that he the government would just give him like a thing of like here have like what 40 euros for a week or something that kind of right. stuff and then like you can't really do much outside of that but like technically you can't technically you are living and you are able to 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 live um but it depends on the situation whether or not you uh, you can have the luxuries but the necessities for sure will be taken care of in the Netherlands I, I think and yeah, also yeah. it depends like if if your health is okay or not as well because he is healthy but he like he even like he always flexes that he's healthy but he doesn't he just like does a certain thing to appear that he needs more and he actually does get it that way yes yeah, and I think that's yeah. the big misconception is people look down on those people. Like, you understand they are not living a life of luxury. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they can live. And that's like, the they can is, live. You go on, the problem is, like, you can go on the internet and you can find the story of the dude that's living off of government assistance, like, flying all over the world. Like, okay, yep, yeah. you know what? There's probably a handful of those guys. The, that That is not, that's not what's happening. Yeah. Trust me, that's not the life you want. You're yeah. happier working your minimum wage job and doing what you think is scraping by as opposed to like being, you know, yeah. beholden and like hoping that you can scrape by. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and again, like I, I, I have to mention it, but um, it also depends on like what kind of health conditions you are in yourself. Like if yeah. you're not able to work, which I don't know if that is for, uh, for Malin's case, I think it is right because Malin said I can't work um then like yes then you they will they will assist you with that kind of stuff too but for um um but if you're voluntarily choosing to live that life then um yeah you i don't think you would really get a lot of benefits as uh as many benefits from it because i mean you're kind of cheating the system so you know what i mean so like, <laughs> uh, yeah you don't really have the luxuries then that's all i'm going to say yeah yeah you can only get so much out of that because i mean they can do mental check they can do health checkups on you and stuff and they'll force that upon you because i mean it's their money they want to make sure that you you know you are the way that you say that you are yes yeah right yeah and like i you know i i don't know i don't know Maylin's particulars but you know saying you know because of mental problems for me I, my assumption would be that if Maylin could do more for their own situation then they would but they're in a situation where yes they do need the assistance like you should get that you should 100 yeah. percent get that and like that's good that those programs are set up you that's know, that's why the netherlands is really nice yes yeah like For the sure. people that need it like absolutely you should get that you know i've uh like i'm a big fan of like take care of like your community take care of the people around you type of thing yeah. Uh, but when you we lack that, I don't know. The, there's a lack of like connection with the people in your immediate vicinity now, and so I understand that like big government assistance is needed. It's unfortunate. It. I don't yeah. think it's an ideal situation, but I don't. Oh. Ooh. Um. Hello, uh, Katana. Uh. Some, uh, uh. Welcome in. Welcome in. Yes. How are you doing? Thank you for the bits as well. Appreciate. it Yes, uh, no, we're talking about, uh, uh, I don't know if, the, if we're necessarily talking about the Dutch government, but just in general, like financial aid and whatnot. We talked about like gaming and all that. Yeah. We talked about a lot of things. Yeah. We talked about a lot of things, yes. Talked about drugs. <laughs> Addi yeah. Addiction, yes. We talked about addiction. I'm not a deep pool. I'm a wide pool. I can cover a lot of subjects. I'm not an expert in any type of field, but, but I, I don't know. I've lived a life. I can, I can go into a few different things. But how are you doing, Katana? How are you doing? 
But yeah, so like the the, the government assistance and all that. I think the Netherlands the, the Netherlands does a does a good job of that for sure. I've never heard anyone really complain about like um, about about assistance from the government for sure. Things we pay a lot of tax a lot, but it's more for the people than for anything else. Yes. Also, just like I can't really judge on 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 the on on tax related things and all that because I'm like I'm used to it ever since I was born. So like for me, it's just the same shit anyway. Like if someone if if they say like okay, um, you're gonna make uh, 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 um, three thousand um, uh, uh, euros or whatever, right? Uh, then I know tax will go off and it's just like a lot less. And I'm just already used to it because it's always been like that. So I, for me, it doesn't really bother me as much let's say some people say like oh but you pay a lot but it's just like i'm all i'm always used to i'm always used to not getting enough i guess right from the like in terms of uh, money if you work and stuff yeah so it's yeah. it's a good it's a good but bad thing because like i'm not supposed to be used to i'm not su supposed to be used to uh paying as much but at the same time it's like i'm already used to it so like it doesn't really affect me as much because i'm used to like um yeah paying pay, paying for a lot and getting little let's say yeah, it's also, like, this is yeah. a big part of, like, what's helped me calm down is, like, understanding, like, there are just some things that, look, I appreciate people that are very passionate and, like, people that want to be activists and things, but at the same time, like, I just, I don't have that in me. I don't care, yeah. man. You know what? I hate taxes. I hate the government. I hate the fact that I have to deal with all this stuff. But at the end of the day, what am I going to do about it? Am I going to let that, like be the end of my life am i gonna be so upset that like i can't enjoy the other things outside of those now you know what i'm probably just like i'm just gonna give me your money i don't yeah. know it's I'm, I'm i'm gonna hope you're gonna do something good with it like i'm thankful at least that what i did with the money that i had i can kind of like write off the fact that the rest of the money that i give to allegedly help people is probably being wasted but at least i i was able to do one thing that certainly is going to benefit some people hopefully you know uh you mentioned the uh, charities earlier and stuff um mm -hmm. i will say that like oh they're the worst they're worse than governments oh, yeah <laughs> I, I was gonna say like they it depends it depends on which charity of course because i can't speak for every single charity out there but for the ones that i happen to know um like one for um homeless people let's say and ones that focus on on uh children's education in benin as well um i haven't i have personal experience with these with, with these charities where i know that the money is not going to where it's supposed to be going as well so that's really that's kind of fucked up like of course i yeah. can't speak for every charity because some charities can be really good of course but just the ones that i happen to know i know for sure um i will never support that and it's funny because once i moved back from benin to the netherlands on the first uh, uh when i was in rotterdam central waiting for a train then um uh, I got approached by one of these charity charity uh, workers, I guess. Or work no, that sounds weird. No, uh, char yeah, people. Rec no, no, no recruiting. One of those people, yeah, basically they, they, they want to collect money, and they're like, and she approached oh, me. Okay. Yeah, and she approached me. He's like, hey, do you have money for for this cause? And like, I happened to recognize that that charity. I'm like, I just came from there, and she looked at me as if I'm on drugs, of course. I'm like, who the fuck goes to Africa? But uh, right. no, I just literally just came from there. I'm like, no, I can't do that. And I, I like, at one point, like I wanted to explain to her as to like why I didn't want to go, but I'm also like, they're just doing their job. They literally don't care whether or not I just, you know, with, about about the cause. They don't care about the cause. They, they just want to get paid. Um, yeah. So I, I ended up just not really talking about it. But yeah, she probably, she, she did think that I was probably crazy. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah, charities are an absolute disaster it's one of those things like i i do not believe what well, like man it sucks because you see this altruism in people like they're barely scraping by every day but they're like willing to give away money and not to get in the whole religious thing but like tithing at churches and that kind of thing like people that are barely making their bills and they're giving their last three dollars to this to this thing and it's like you have no control over you would be better served keeping that three dollars like do something again like support your family support your community like put another three dollars into that where you can see the direct impact of it i'm not a big fan of giving to a charity like tiny amounts of money because those tiny amounts of money they just get washed away in yeah. like random administrative costs and things the reason i did what i did was because i also don't believe in just giving individual people like just you know way more money than they've had in their entire life like most people don't handle that well I, and yeah. especially the people that i had in my life at that time like th that would have been a, a death sentence for a lot of those people they wouldn't know what to do with it but 
the amount of money that I did have to give, like, I know I can give those to, like, children's cancer research, and it's so much money that, like, even if, you know, half of it gets wiped away and just bullshit administrative costs, that other half is still going to mean something. Yeah. Whereas, you know, the $3 every week that you're giving to this thing, like, just keep that for yourself. Like, you're not changing anyone's life with your $3, so, but that three dollars can really help you out just I don't it also depends it depends really because like it it's, does it's it's, it's some it, good because it also depends on like let's say the whole thing about what uh, what people say about twitch as well um where like um some people like let's say if every person that came in uh dropped a dollar then that person could could live off it right the same thing yeah. it's like then if but if nobody does it then however then that person can't stream let's say um so that's like it, it really could. depends it really depends yeah. It, it does. It does really depend. I just play the law of averages, knowing that how the how these charities work, yeah. how a charity or a nonprofit works, particularly I, when they like have to label themselves nonprofit. I've never been in a position with uh, where I've had a lot of money, but I will say that if uh, if I had money, okay. Basically, let me let, let me let me say it like this: if I did not have to worry about bills and stuff, I would probably. Uh, um, use my time as well to then volunteer and stuff and do do stuff do stuff for other people. Um, That's what I would say. Use yeah. your time because time like is time is definitely a lot more yep. valuable for sure. Yep, exactly. Yeah, we talk yes. about time being the most valuable thing you can do. Yeah, That's the most valuable thing that you can give to things that you actually care about. Yeah, and then you can see your input as well. Like if you actually go out somewhere and you help, let's say for example something as simple as like as like feeding the feeding the homeless rather than just giving them giving them money and all that. Money. And you can see like you know you're you're, you're doing something that helps them out. Um, and that's what I would want to see as well. And it has nothing to do about like, oh, I want other people to see me doing this, all this, all that, because you can make that argument. No, I don't necessarily even have to see it. I could literally just be packing, packing like boxes full of clothing that you, they would ship over to Ukraine or some shit. And I, they wouldn't, wouldn't even know that I would do that. So like some st stuff like that too. Yeah, that, that would be a lot more meaningful than just giving money than like that. Now, in some case, of course, money can help, can help certain people, but, um, for, for most scenarios if like if i'm in a place where i don't have to worry about any any uh, uh financial stuff then i, I would 100 percent provide time yeah yeah and you can always do that but that's something you know you can always give time I yeah would but that's also personal preference of course as to like what you want to do for your community and that kind of stuff yeah 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 and i like you were talking about like you don't care about people seeing i think a lot of people do care about people knowing and I think that's where a lot of that, which, look, the, it, if that's the thing that, like, motivates people to, like, want to help something, I'm all with taking the good, like, taking the bad that comes with a good end result. So I understand that there's going to be some of that in any yeah. act of altruism. I probably, I assume it more often than not. So, yeah, the, there's always, I mean... I don't know. I feel like I keep going back and forth, like telling you, "Don't give your money. Give your money. Don't <laughs> give your money." But like, yeah. I mean, it depends. It, it depends. If all right? you got is money and you don't have time, or like you're not interested in giving time and you just want to give money. I guess something is better than nothing. I yeah. Just, it's hard, man. I've seen so much wasted. I've seen, just, it's crazy. It's, um, but also a good example would be, uh, in Benin where. Um, my dad would sometimes actually like at the start, when we first got there he'd be pretty big because he would feel bad about, about the people local people and all that being really poor and whatnot so he ended up giving uh, uh this one child um he gave her uh, a bicycle like a kid's bike and then uh, the one that we had from the netherlands so we shipped that over and then um and then yeah and then the the dad the dad apparently took it sold it and bought alcohol right so that stuff can also yeah. happen of course yeah yeah it's fucked up yeah, the world's weird, man. Yeah. I don't know. Help people. Again, think, uh, help the people around you. Help yeah. the immediate. I, I think that's like, it's great that the internet has brought so many people together, but I think it's also desensitized us to the things around us. And we can, we yes. feel like we're connected to this much larger community that you actually have no connection with. Yeah. None of these people know you exist. None of these people care. But like, I bet, you know, if your neighbor saw you working your ass off and still, like, starving to death and not being able to afford your bills, they'd probably care a lot more about you than that random person. On 100%. Twitter. Yes. You know, 
take care of that stuff. Yes. And that's the thing that that's the thing that we're lacking, dude. Is is the connection on the internet, you know, like over the internet. Sorry, is we don't really have that same connection unless you build up to that connection. I think a lot of people are not really used to that because of the whole like not learning how to um, how to how to interact with other people, I guess too. But um, like once you do, once you do, and you have like friends that you that you that you talk to and stuff, it's it's such a wonderful feeling to know that like you, you know you can have these friendships over the internet. Sorry, uh, Frank, we gotta go have fun. See ya. Have yourself a good night, coach. Thank you for hanging out. Yes, yeah. Yeah, no, you should definitely be able to develop those kind of relationships. Yeah, it's, it's hard. It's harder. It's harder than it yeah. used to be, for sure. You yes. just work from inside out. Take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Take care of the people right around you and then branch yeah. out from there. And I feel like everyone would be just personally a whole lot happier, too. There's always going to be that next thing to freak out about that there's nothing you can do anything about it's beyond your control and those are the things that are constantly thrown in your face every day it's like this situation that in other times you would have no idea about and yes it's very unfortunate but there's also again there's nothing you can do about that i don't know you've also got problems at home yeah. fix those yeah i think um one of the quotes from uh, another streamer that i know um was you can't give from an from an empty cup yes yeah yeah yeah, so. very true. When 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 they said that, of course, it's like these are the things that you always hear sometimes in a different way or whatever. Um, and you, but it's just we tend to forget these things as well. Like as we uh, as we get older, we just forget about certain life things, certain red flags, let's say as well. And then like you just get reminded again. But that one definitely is a very important one to always remember that you cannot give from an empty cup, dude. Like make sure that your cup is overflowing and you can give from that. That's all right. That's okay yeah. because it's overflowing. But take it's care of yourself. Yes. Yeah, it's one of those things you either forget it or because we're so engrossed in meme culture, like it's yeah. been mean to death. Yeah. And it's like, uh, you know, the whole like money doesn't make you happy. Like, I, I wish that this is like me kind of being a bit of a troll. Like, I, I wish I had the transcripts of everything that I had sent away and be like, no, no, no. Trust me when I tell you that do like you can have this. And it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be happy with your life. This is coming from a place of experience. Yeah. Like this is someone who's been poor as hell, rich as hell, poor, and okay. Like uh, I've ridden the whole roller coaster. I can tell you, depending on the type of person you are, again, it's different for everyone. But this is not coming from a place of ignorance. I'm also not someone that just like grew up with money my whole life and went like, "Ooh, why does money matter?" Like, no, I <laughs> trust me, I get it. Yeah. But also, um, yeah, I think um, I'm gonna call it here because it's been a, it's been a, yes. it's been a hot minute. But uh, uh, thank you so much. Normally, cause normally, because if you know, if it was a streamer or whatever, I'd be like, yeah, where can we find you or not? But uh, we can find you in the Twitch chat. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, yeah. Don't find me anywhere. I don't exist. <laughs> yeah. Find. I'm at Mash's house, hanging out. Mash's with house. Oh, How no. about that? Yeah. No, but um, yeah, no. Thank you so much for uh, for joining, dude. Um, I think yeah, uh, yeah. and um, I, I don't I don't know how I'm, I'm awkward but yes but but uh, but, but I appreciate <laughs> it soon. it's I would yeah, definitely yeah. say that I got I got a lot more into into this whole thing um in towards the half of the uh of this thing episode whatever um I was very nervous at the start but I'm thinking it was pretty it was pretty clear yes <laughs> yeah yeah no, it's hanging with the homies <laughs> hanging with the homies dude yes I can always talk about the stuff yes more, more so off stream like I'll I'll go into some real crazy stuff off stream with yes you. <laughs> one last thing one last thing money just opens up opportunity Tarek once said that can make you happy but it does not have to make you happy yes that was about super relatable i see well hey thank you Tarek. and um yeah no thank you sauce um i'm gonna uh, end the call here and um yes and uh, and, uh, and thanks again uh, uh, bye, -bye, bye 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 bye